Hi there, my name is Rybinator. I'm a certified dice goblin and a creator of tabletop crafting goods, as you can see by my YouTube channel. However, you might not know that I'm also the dungeon master for a show called The Red Wagon Inn over at Level Up Dice on Twitch. We stream every Tuesday night from 7 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We give away a ton of cool prizes, like dice from the dice makers that are players within my show, and we've given away many of the sets that you've seen on my YouTube channel here. But sometimes that time period doesn't really work for people, so I totally get it. As such, we're going to start uploading those videos every Wednesday after they go live on Tuesday night. That way you can still check out the episodes or see what you might have missed and catch up on your Red Wagon Inn before you have to watch the next episode. I'm going to put all the episodes in a playlist so you can watch them from start to finish if you want. However, I'm not going to put on notifications for these uploads. That way, as you watch them, you don't have to be caught up on your phone for them. You can still check out regular Ribonator content, but if you want a place to come watch your Red Wagon Inn and get get your fix, this is where you're going to come for it. But enough about that. You're here to watch some Red Wagon Inn already, so let's just get into it. Grab a drink, pull up a chair, and come hang out with us at the Red Wagon Inn. We'll see you on Tuesday nights. Oh, I think I see something. Oh, we are live. Just as I put my finger on it. There we go. <laughs> nothing starts a brand new stream like technical difficulties and shows nothing but pure professionalism. <laughs> Awesome. Well, welcome Hi. everybody to the very first Red Wagon in stream with these awesome dice makers. And I am so happy to get to play with you all and play some Dungeons and Dragons on these Tuesday nights going forward. So thank everybody for coming and joining on the stream, but also thank the four of you for joining us here, especially those who it's your job with level up dice. So <laughs> thank you for coming. Um, <laughs> thank you, Ryan. First off, Thanks for having uh, us. I want everybody to be able to introduce themselves as people before we introduce the world and introduce you as characters. Uh, but prior to any of that stuff, for those of you who are in Australia and tomorrow for the rest of the world, it is Bree's birthday. So we have to say a yeah. huge happy birthday to Bree. So thank you, Bree, for happy having happy a birthday. birthday. <laughs> uh, sure. I'm very proud to have been born. Thank you. It, you've been working on it your whole life. So are we, Brad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, my name's is uh, I make dice tutorials and other random tabletop stuff on uh, YouTube, and I have a good time doing it, and I fail a lot, but we learn together. Uh, but I want to introduce these four lovely people, so if we could go around from top left around. Let's start with Jackie. Can you introduce yourself to the world and to the people? Hello, world. <laughs> um, I am Jackie. I am one half of Moonbeam Menagerie. Been playing D&D for almost two years, making dice for a little bit over a year, and um, super excited and happy to be here. Awesome, Drew. Intro us. Hello, I'm Drew with Dicey Encounters. I make dice and play D&D, &D, and I'm here for you. Awesome. Oh. Alex, hit us up. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alex. I am the CEO of Level Up Dice, and we've been running Level Up Dice now for about five-ish years, and playing D&D since I was 11, which is so long ago that the first book I had was a Dungeons and Dragons, not even a second edition. Oh, man. Ooh, well, nice. since you're the CEO, we'll have I'll try not to kill your character too early, or else I'll get kicked <laughs> off the stream. <laughs> Bree, give us an intro. Hi, I'm Bree. Um, I am Fortune Favors. Uh, if you've seen some of my dice, that's me. And I also work as the social media manager for Level Up Dice, which is new and really exciting. So you will find me here a lot. Sorry for you having a look at my head all the time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you uh, for all the players who have joined in, uh, and thank you for all the people who are watching on the stream. Uh, it's going to be a fun night tonight. We actually have two giveaways coming up after a break, and towards the end, we have Drew, his awesome-looking set uh, based off of his character, uh, and my very first set coming out of my channel. So I'm very excited for uh, two of y'all to get some dice coming out of us, and then we have more planned for the future uh, with some of the other awesome dice makers on here so uh keep tuning in for more dice because that's kind of what we do and if we didn't do that i feel like people would riot so i'm glad that we are doing <laughs> that awesome well i think there's nothing to it but to do it are y'all good to go 
Yeah. Yeah. Ready when you are. Awesome. So what I want to do uh, is we will get started and we'll just jump right into the game. When we get to your characters, I'm going to ask each of you to kind of give me a general description of you, but don't give anything too much away uh, that you don't want to. Just give me some surface level thoughts about your character. Give me a description, etc. when we get going, because uh, we will reveal as time goes on as we get playing. So thank you for everybody for tuning in. Let's start the Red Wagon in. grab a drink, and let's tell a tale. So let me move the screen on over to the desktop with our fiery transition here purely so you can see <laughs> this world map because i'm going to tell us where we're starting today this is my homebrew map of the world of asterion let me give you a little bit of backstory a hundred years ago in asterion there was a war of the gods the great lord of the undead anrock finally created his undead army through the kingdom of the Korokrucians. In doing so, his power multiplied exponentially, and he took the form of a great wolf, and in one howl, he killed all of the previous gods. Think all of the D&D &D canon? They dead now. Now we have new gods. The world functions much like that of George R. R. Martin's. There are those who worship the gods of the old and the gods of the new. Many of the new gods, being that that was only a hundred years ago, still walk the earth to this day. So if you have a deity that you want to meet, maybe go shake their hand sometime. But a hundred years have passed, and since the Korokrucians were defeated and Anrock banished back into hell like the demon that he is, the connection severing the undead that he had arisen has since blanked. Now undead roam both as feral ghouls and as sentient beings trying to find their way in the earth, uh, and or not earth, in Asterion. And as such, many kingdoms have decided to outlaw them. Many kingdoms have welcomed them with open arms as just sentient beings trying to find their own world. And so times have changed here in Asterion as of late. The past 100 years has seen much change across the land. Kingdoms have come and gone, and many have tried to ascend their own selves to the status of godhood. As the gods are chosen by the people, they gain their powers through the faith and the belief that people put into them that they are powerful, that they are somebody that they can bestow their faith in or put their fears in to keep away. And so many, many places throughout the land fill with arenas now. You cannot hardly find a large city without some sort of arena as people are always trying to prove themselves worthy of godhood across the land. And as such, we're going to start our adventure today down here in the bottom left in the extreme desert of the Scorch. The last remaining city in the Scorch is Oasis. I know I'm not original on names. Oasis is literally what it says. It is based upon the last remaining water source of this extremely fiery desert. Temperatures sometimes reaching up in the 130s, much like what Arizona sees on a normal day. The desert is vast. There is one hold in the Dry Gulch hold. No one has been allowed entrance for the past couple hundred years. No one even knows if it's manned anymore. It has a great wall surrounding it. But the oasis, where we will start our adventure today, next to the Clear Springs, exists based upon the old metropolis of the world. The old gods, long before even the ones who died, made a sprawling metropolis think uh, Egypt in style. Uh, this was once lush green forest, but rumors say a curse of an ancient evil put the scorch upon the land and now those who survive in the scorch must survive near a water source there are beasties of many many matters of size height and ferocity throughout the scorch many adventurers come here because getting one head from one of the beasts in the scorch might be just enough to set you for a lifetime as the material components that come from the beasts are things of great great value for both alchemists apothecaries and and, and hunters alike and so we will start our journey today in oasis much like the rest of the world, Oasis is home to a brand new arena. It was not there before, but it was erected by those who wished to prove themselves worthy of the gods. Oasis has found itself trying to find new leaders as before it had none, but now 
It is under the great leader, Kenak. He isn't anything governed in. He is just the greatest warrior the land has ever seen, and nobody's going to tell him no. He is a lizard folk of great might, slaying the previous champion in a single blow. And now he has called his people of the Scourge together for an arena battle to last the centuries. And as such, that is where we will begin. It is nearing the end of the day. Uh, the sun is setting. The torches uh, around the braziers are lighting up the sky for the oasis is a filled city. There are hundreds of thousands of people living in Oasis. Though it is hard to live there, near the clear springs, water is plentiful and there is much gold to be made in the Oasis. And so it might seem dark outside, but the Braziers are lighting everything up just fine. As two of our characters, Jackie's Zania and Drew's team, make their way to the arena spectacle, they find their seat amongst the rest of their uh uh, civilians, gosh, that's the word I'm looking for, amongst the rest of the civilians gathering on one of the top rungs on this three-story arena. Oasis has made quite a spectacle of their arena sports as of late. Jackie and Drew, before we go any further, how about you give me a good description of who Team and Zania are? Drew, go first. <laughs> um... <laughs> um so oh no go ahead nope nope drew you go i will point it out <laughs> oh, all right fine <laughs> uh, so team is an unwilling uh which is a um undead uh, that was raised unwillingly uh long story short he's a laid back dude um and he's an archer Right. Can you give me a description of how he looks? Oh, yeah. That would probably be helpful. I'm going to push you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Team uh, once was a bronze dragonborn. Uh, so, he's definitely got, like, the finned horns on the sides. Um, very skeletal Egyptian feel to him uh, with the Egyptian gauntlets and things like that. Um, and an interesting thing about Team is he has a little creature with him as well. Uh, it's a undead winged jackal named Anta. Ooh. Now, uh, as a brief aside for everyone, the unwilling uh, are distinguished by their tattooed and rune-covered bones. Their feral counterparts uh, are regular skeleton zombies and those that you might find, uh, but the unwilling are mostly welcome in a few of the uh, countries around and distinguished by those markings so that you can tell, hey, that skeleton's probably uh, not going to kill me uh, because they are tattooed. However, should you find one that has no markings, uh, you might want to run. Jackie, how about you give us a description of Zania? All right. So uh, Zania is a um, Leonin uh, cleric, and she's about like six and a half feet tall. She's got this um, wondrous mane that goes down the top of her head and ends in beautiful red highlights. And she can definitely be intimidating, but th at the same time just be... Um, neutral to you depending on what side you get awesome i like it so now let's set the scene as i bring up a little bit of mood music the cheer of the arena fills your ears as everyone is waiting on bended knee for their great leader to come out of the scorch uh, and to enter the arena to address the crowd the great red lizard Kenak. the sun begins to set the torches light on the side as the crowd goes wild you can hear the drums do -doom, do -doom, do -doom, do -doom, as Kenak makes his way onto the sands in the middle of the arena the arena a giant sandstone sculpture dedicated to those who have died in the sands and the glory that they have earned. Kenak raises his spear. And before we go any further, Drew, team, I need you to give me a perception check. Ooh, I got you. And this will be the first roll of the campaign. Ooh. No pressure. <laughs> <clears throat> Using my patented Ribonator team dice. <laughs> Hey, that's a uh, 14 plus 
Uh, let's see. Perception is a plus zero, so a 14. 14. Hey, solid. Everyone's eyes, including yours, though they are sockets for you, are focused right on Keenak as he <laughs> begins to speak to the crowd, holding aloft a great golden spear, when suddenly, for the first time in your new life, you recognize that spear. You can't exactly picture where it came from, but you know you've seen it in your previous life. It is a golden spear with the tip like a rising sun. And that memory fills your mind. Zinnia, you look to the side and you can see your friend Tim taken aback, which through his travels is rare for you to see. Tim, you find yourself a bit shaken as Keenak begins to address the crowd. <clears throat> Let's see if I can do a lizard folk voice. <laughs> As he holds his spear aloft and he says, I, Keenak, address my people. As the crowd goes wild, ah, cheers all around by yeah. everyone. Many throwing coins and flowers off into the dirt, not for Keenak himself, but for the victors and those who survive the gladiatorial combat to earn. Keenak points at one of the doors off to the side. He says, Blood will be spilled tonight in the great name of the gods. Again, eruption throughout the crowds. But first, I have a spectacle to give all of you. And everyone kind of stops and shudders for a little bit. What does he mean? This this hasn't ever been done before. Uh, I, you can kind of hear... Uh, children off to the side. Yes, children attend these games. Children off to the side, hoping for some sort of treat for them. And treat they shall have as Keenak yells off, All the way from the Korakrucians, I bring in the circus of Mr. Mittens. Uh, which, uh, as such, a great crowd of circus-going folk, the tallest Goliath that you have ever seen, the shortest gnome that might have ever graced the land, the most muscular halfling woman to ever kiss her biceps, and the longest beard you possibly have ever seen on a dwarf, followed by rat folk, flame jugglers, and many other circus performers come to show off their talents in the arena. As such, the crowd is at first taken aback a little bit by seeing this, but their worries are quickly abated as the bearded dwarf woman breathes out a jet of flame and a flaming dragon flies up in the sky. Yes, very Bilbo as it explodes <laughs> over the top of the arena. Silence fills before yet again, yeah, cheering on all sides across the crowds as now the performance of the circus of Mr. Mittens begins. As such, what I want to do now is Bree, Summer, Alex, Salt, I need you to give me descriptions of your characters. Absolutely. So, Summer is um, a very well-dressed, uh, rat she's very she her fur is very beautifully maintained uh she wears a gloriously tall top hat um you may from time to time see someone peeking out of that we'll have to see um and she kind of she carries a drum with her and kind of twirls the the stick drumstick in her hand and then and then beats the drum as she as she enters, making sure that all eyes are on the circus and, and on her. An amazing ringleader that she is. Salt, can you describe yourself? Definitely. So as you can tell, we're rat folk because of our Australian accents. We come from <laughs> down under. And uh, <laughs> Salt is one half of the duo of Salt and Summer, or also known as Summer Salt. And we are um, definitely related. We'll, we'll keep it at that. Uh, Salt <laughs> itself it's a bit more ragged looking. Um, you can tell if you have a close look that all his clothes are perfect, but they are designed to look like they're not. And currently is in the middle of juggling one, two, three, four, five different items, including using his tail to fling the flaming sword in the air. Absolutely fantastic. Not only are these rats acro rats, literal acrobatic rats that are going to perform on the circus floor today, there are a myriad of other circus performers. So what I want from 
summer and salt is I want them to describe their acrobatic act that they are doing, and then I'm going to get a performance or an acrobatics roll, depending on what you're doing from each of you, to see how well you can wow this crowd. Ooh. Let's start uh, with summer. Sorry. So I, I was just going to say, I think that the before any of the actual acrobatic starts, um, Summer makes sure she does kind of a round of salt and, and make sure that everyone is is keeping their eyes on them as opposed to what else is going on in the circus. And Ooh. she starts kind of chucking more things into the into the juggling act and um, kind of is grabbing grabbing different items, um, you know, to get the crowd involved, get them very worked up and enthusiastic about what's happening, um, like approaching people and may I borrow your hat and tossing that into the into the juggling act. And then, um, yeah, we'll see what, see what Salt does. At does one point, that. an enthusiastic uh, uh, Goliath takes out his glass eye and tosses it uh, to Salt to begin juggling as well, uh, which, of course, makes the rest of the Goliaths in the crowd lose their minds <laughs> salt what are you doing i am trying to juggle whatever gets thrown at me um <laughs> it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a lot in life when it comes to um being the brother of summer and currently at the moment looking around that i'm paying attention to what's in my hands and my tail um there is a dagger a sword a hat an eye um some piece of food not 100% sure, it's just, we'll just keep juggling it in there, and perhaps a object that looks kind of spherical, but we're not sure what it is at the moment. I love it. Now, because of what you described, Bree, I need you to give me a performance check to see how well you can aid Salt, and depending on your role, Salt, you may get a bonus on your acrobatics. Mm, okay, okay. I'm relying on the fact that I'm meant to be good at this 15 15 that is a solid role you are very good at this you get the crowd going Zania and team your eyes though darting back and forth mostly uh over at Keenak himself you can't help but stop and look at the juggling eye and flaming sword spectacle it is just marvelous so salt for your acrobatics role you have advantage now <clears throat> wonderful luckily i have two dice available ah. <laughs> Well, when you roll the same number twice, it doesn't make a difference. Um, plus acrobatics, I have rolled a 15. 15. A solid number both ways. You uh, throw the eye up, and at one point you, you feel yourself beginning to fall, uh, and this is uh, palpable as the flaming sword follows the eye and is coming down directly towards your head. You can hear the crowd gasp <gasps> before your tail catches the flaming sword and you catch the rest of the items along your arms and catching the eye right on your fingertips as you look out to the rest of the crowd and the crowd <laughs> loses their freaking mind they love the juggling act this is absolutely something beyond what they ever thought they would see here they were just coming for an arena spectacle now they have a family show eyeballs and all you eventually toss the eyeball back to uh, the Goliath uh, as yeah. he puts it back in his eye, uh, finally being able to see what's going on uh, and claps along with everyone else uh, in the when we When we do return these items, um, Summer wants to make a very um, obvious display of um, making, making it very theatrical when she returns the objects so that the people who she's returning them to be very much at her and not anything else that might be happening along the way. Of course, absolutely. <laughs> now, um, with the circus act, the final act of the circus comes out a rare sight, hardly seen across the land. In chains is brought out a Yuan Ti pure blood, a full half snake, half woman beast as she comes flying out, chains across her arms, trying her best to get away from her captors, which are your friends in the circus. Uh, Zania and team, you can tell that this is not just uh, a mere beast. This is a sentient being, just like you, team. This kind of hits you a little bit close to home uh, as this uh, Yuan Ti screams out, uh, trying her best to get out of these chains before 
the rest of the people from the circus exit, and Keenak picks up his spear and walks to the other edge of the arena. He points his blade at the Yonti before the other circus performers leave. Salt, Summer, you head back out the gate and into Mr. Mitten's giant circus tent for the rest of the night. Zania, Tim, you are witness to gruesome yet glorifying spectacles. You can't help but feel a little saddened by the Yonti. Tim, you, as you described before, once were an arena fighter, and being forced into fights like this has no honor in it. However, there are many glorious fights to come, and this is the way of life in arena fighting. A bit of time passes, about two hours of this giant arena spectacle, many, many deaths, many recreated battles in the sand. It is now pitch dark at night. Zania, team, you find yourself sitting on the pews uh, of the bleachers, or though they are sandstone, in the arena as everyone begins to leave. What would you like to be doing? So the team's gonna look look down, look at Ada, look over at Xenia. He's gonna look back down to Ada and say, Nozeratun. And Ada's gonna jump up, stare off towards the thing. He's going to look over uh, and kind of wait for people to vacate around uh, the two of them. And uh, once that happens, he's going to look over to Xenia. He says, you, you know um, the, the spear, the spear that he hid. The gold, and so he's going to open up his hand and use prestigitation to create a little illusory picture of the sphere, or the spear. It says, I've I've been, I've been undead, uh, alive. Uh, I've been here for 104 years, yes. And I have had nothing that makes me remember. That made me remember. It was um, very interesting seeing how you reacted to that spear. Uh, do you think we should go for it? I think we might need help. And we go. And we get it. Those um, acrobatic rats seemed like potential allies. They might be good. They might not looks be. Like they, look like they could think on, think and act on their feet. And the one with the uh, the juggles, he has things he throws. He might be good. I like the one with the hat. Very big hat could hide mm. things. I think we should go find maybe them and have conversation. I think we should too. At this team, you and Zania, one of the few people remaining uh, in the arena, besides a few kids recreating some of the battles they saw with sticks uh, across the bleachers, you two walk out uh, through one of the gateways into the night, uh, lit up purely by a few torches. You both have dark vision, uh, and so this doesn't bother you. However, a human walking around at this point at night, since uh, torches are all kind of slowly being burnt out, the arena match is over, it's maybe 10 o'clock at night right now, it's pretty dark. You're able to see, all right, but others uh, that you see walking by who don't have night vision are all carrying torches or lanterns uh, of some kind. You walk uh, around the arena for a little bit, attempting to uh, get towards uh, the circus tent, correct? That's what you said you were doing? Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Then we are going to go back over to Summer and Salt. Summer, you had the performance of a lifetime tonight. You are certain that uh, Mr. Mittens, or, or Boris, uh, as you know him by his first name, is planned to give out much, much coin here. This has to be the greatest show that the circus has ever put on. Uh, and as such, you find yourself with all of the other uh, circus performers, the, the bearded dwarf lady, the extremely tiny gnome at about a foot tall, uh, all waiting uh, for your coin. You collect the coin both for uh, you and Salt. Salt, you are sitting uh, nearby, never too far away from your uh, twin sister, uh, as you're waiting for Boris to come and hand out the coin. And when he does, uh, old, old dwarvish fella uh, with uh, a hat, 
not unlike your own, but much more uh, tattered with a large cigar off to his side and a scarred eye across here. Boris, or Mr. Mittens, comes walking along with his cane and says, Aye, you did good tonight. I can't say that I doesn't bring a tear to my eye to see the amount of coin that we're going to be pulling in the rest of these nights here in Oasis. Uh, as uh, the rest of uh, the circus begins to kind of, uh, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah, we are going to get more coin. Uh, yeah. He says, well, for a first night well done, I think I should let my generosity show its hand. Uh, as he uh, begins walking by uh, with a uh, big pouch of money. You know this to be exactly how he always hands out his coins. Uh, and this is the moment, Summer, you and Salt are waiting for. He walks by with his big pouch of coins and says, take yourself five gold. You did good uh, to the little uh, gnome as he pokes up five gold coins. And he's like, uh, thank you, sir. I, I'm so, mm, I, I did my best. And he's like, I, you did. You had to be small. That's how you did your best. Uh, as he walks on by, he has to pull out five coins for the Goliath because his fingers are just too big to fit into the bag. Uh, but he gets to you, Summer and Salt, uh, as he offers out your five coins each. Uh, from the bag. Do you take your coins? Yeah. Yeah, we take our coins. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Mittens. I, I I definitely think that we carried the show this evening. You are welcome. And we'll be taking that coin nice and quickly. Thank you. Thanks, mate. I think uh, you, d you did mighty fine there, Summer. Uh, salt, I hadn't seen you juggle like that in quite a long time. And and that thing you did with the eyeball. <laughs> oh, marvelous work there, son. You're welcome. He uh, holds out the bag uh, for each of you to uh, grab uh, your coins and begins walking to the rest of the... Uh, circus folk uh, passing along their coins everyone uh beginning to kind of get ready to uh either go to sleep or go for a night of drinking with their newly earned coin uh as summer and salt you head over to your small little cots uh the sound of some of the creatures in the circus planned for the nights to come uh, fills the room uh, a manticore and a salamander bang against the cage it, will be quite a show, but you can't help but feel a little bit sorry for uh, the creatures there. Summer, you take a seat uh, on your cot right next to Salt. Uh, as Salt, you look down. How many coins do you actually have in your hand? Well, that's a good question. Um, I believe I was able to snatch two or three small bits and pieces out of some pouches, but um, I'll let you decide on the exact amount. Yeah, why don't we roll me a sleight of hand? For sure. And that would be a 16. 16? Why don't we say you got three extra gold out of that pouch? Perfect. <laughs> I got three extra gold. Summer's going to summer's gonna lift off her top hat and um, let her little friend pop out. Uh, Please explain to cool. chat who the friend was and how he came about <laughs> absolutely so i don't know if 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 uh is it mick cool penguin mick cool i don't know if penguin mick cool with us at the moment but um we have a a friendly little penguin who lives inside my top hat and his name is penguin von cool and he's chilling in there um he probably takes an extremely deep breath because sometimes Summer's not the best at remembering he has to come out and breathe. Uh, <laughs> and I feel like in his little fins, he's holding maybe uh, a couple of watches and um, some jewels, depending on how well we did. <laughs> uh, why don't we say he gets one watch and two rings? <laughs> mm -hmm. Beautiful. As... Uh... Your penguin McCool friend uh, speaks up, and he <laughs> sentient animal uh, that he was, uh, and a spell uh, for permanence of tongues was cast on penguin McCool. Uh, your little hat penguin friend speaks up. Yeah, we got us a good score tonight. We got ourselves a whole watch. I hadn't seen one of these things besides the, you know, 
the sundial ones, and these these never work for me. They I can't even hold them right half the times. But yeah, I got, well. I got two rings off the lady. The dude who threw his eyeball, I couldn't catch it in time. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, look, it's okay, Von Cool. It's it's fine. We've got to we've got to make sure some slips through, or they'll get a bit sus. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, you know. Uh, for all the work that I did, though, maybe next time, instead of uh, one, you throw maybe a few more fish down in the hat. Uh, it'd be much appreciated. We'll see what we can do. Look, look, Salt, I'm a, I'm a little bit... I, I'm starting to think that we could do this a bit more efficiently on our own. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, you know, it's... We're not the forerunners of being visited and seen, right? I... We have distractions. I think, well, I do like when people look at me, so you know this, and I just feel like the rest is a little bit too much of a distraction. And we've got Von Cool in the hat, and he's quite he's quite good with his hands, well, his fins. It's amazing what a, a penguin can do without any fingers. <laughs> and, I mean, really... All the gnome does is be short, and it's the same payout as we get. Is that fair? I mean, he doesn't get as much as we get. <laughs> That's because we take things into our own hands, so... And I think we should keep doing that. It's working for us. I got no problems with it. Look at what these flippers can do. I just think we can be more, you know? At this... Well, let's get through and out of the oasis first, because it's going to be hard to get out of here. At... We're in the middle of a desert, after all this point in your conversation something that you hate to hear something that you dread hearing whenever it happens you hear boris or mr mitten in the distance of your large tent i oh, hold on here hey hold. nobody leaves the tent no one not till i get what's mine some of you Gosh. might think you're funny some of you might think you're quite clever. Stealing from Mr. Mittens from all the generosity that I give you. Oh, I'm going to find which one of you did it. And I, I don't think I don't see it. This isn't the first time before. Whichever one of you stole me coin, I'll have your head. I'll have each of your heads, you hear me? And if none of you fess up, I'll take all of your heads this time. Everyone get up here now. As uh, Boris and Mr. Mittens... Uh, or well, not Boris and Boris, who is Mr. Mittens, uh, begins to yell, and some of his hired goons that he always keeps uh, in the cage begin to pull out some of their clubs and some of their sticks, uh, ready to do what you know to be the beatdown of the century. And he doesn't sound like he's ready to play this time. What are you going to do? Uh, I'm fifth. first going to um, shove Von Cool right in that hat with all like, the loot. <laughs> fifth, I, some of that coin I got just to. Uh, let you know where I got it from. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It, maybe, maybe this time to leave. Maybe it's time to okay. to go and do our own thing for a while. I, I, I mean, I can try and charm him. Do you, do you think we should just just get out of the circus? Is it time to leave the circus? I mean, we've been here a while. We've learned everything we can, really. And you know, as you as you said, that, that, you know, you're not really the spotlight, and so they're you know, weighing us down in that regard. I, I definitely think your idea is spot on. I 100% follow you on mm. that one. Well, I'm glad that you've come to my way of thinking, brother. I, definitely, definitely. All right. Well, we should probably scram. I mean, yeah. he really does like that bat. And about that, uh, you hear in the background, you little pipsqueak, uh, as you see uh, Mr. Mittens uh, kick the poor little gnome uh, that you knew from oh. earlier. Uh, sad that it is, uh, you do think it's about time to get out of here. How are you going to try and escape this tent without being seen? Oh, dear. Uh, can we, um, where is under the tent? You can yeah. totally give it a shot. Me Tell me what you're doing. Um, I, I think while he's beating down on the gnome, I, let's just scramble out. Let's be some scramble rats. Do we want to sneak out, or do we want to just run? A sneakily sneak, get... right? Yeah, yeah. yeah let's, sneak. let's sneak under the... Maybe we, can... We can, we can get through. Maybe we can roll some... Um, create some distractions, if possible, across the other side of the tent. 
Are you going to um, try and distract, or are you just trying to head right out from under the bottom? I I'm going to start casting some minor illusion um, on okay. the other side of the tent. What do you create? Um, just some, just some sounds that kind of are going to pull the, like, quick, let's get out of here. Some scurrying type sounds Ooh. on the other side of the tent while, um, while Salt does his thing and disappears. I will, I will activate my pepper's tail and push over some of the boxes around where that sound is as well can you describe what pepper's tail is for those who do not know of course so uh, uh summer and salt had a well uh, we'll, we'll get into more of the backstory later but um there's a, a a ethereal style tail that pops up every once in a while and um for those who like um the, t the technical behind it acts like it's a mage hand uh but it's a uh, pepper's tail and it's a uh, third tail of the two of us fantastic uh for those who were unable to make it to the uh lore forge streams y'all came up with the magic items so they're gonna use them <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh with that you both create uh sounds of like ah, let's get out of here trying to distract them uh possibly uh, make them think that somebody else stole the coins uh, and is out on that side. Maybe it wasn't just you, uh, as you take Pepper's tail to push over uh, one of the pots on the side and the jugs full of water uh, as the uh, guards that are there begin to kind of... Uh, <laughs> he must have gone that way! Uh, as uh, they uh, kind of scramble out. Uh, one of the big bruisers that you know uh, to be there, who uh, you've, you've taken a clock from him a time or two, not quite the smartest uh, as he follows the... Uh, water jug uh roll me let's see hmm for what y'all are both doing both of y'all roll me a uh hmm either deception or performance your choice oh that's a so bad that look there brie seven from mm -hmm. me what did we get uh nine Nine. Hey, look, you had a bad face. But I want to point out that I get, I get plus seven. <laughs> yeah, I want to point out that I get a plus four on both. <laughs> oh, fantastic! <sighs> right. Um, so as you knock these things over, uh, your tail, which has uh, been a part of your act once or twice before, knocks over the jug uh, off on the side. Uh, and though he's thick-brained, he does recognize a floating rat tail when he sees one. Uh, as he turns uh, and looks quickly towards your bunk, uh, as do the other ones. You you make the voice, again, part of your act. Maybe should have chosen a different person to uh, make the voice after. Uh, the other uh, bruisers on the other side for uh, Mr. Mittens uh, begin looking your way. Quick reaction. What are you two doing? Run. <laughs> like Run. It. Just book it. All right. Like it as we stay down under. <laughs> as, you, as you stay down under. Both of you pull open the side of the massive tent and duck it on out of there. And we're going to pause there for a second. Team, Zania, you have spent some time. Uh, you think, you know what? Maybe they might know a trick or two. Maybe those acro rats that you saw before. Maybe maybe we should at least talk to them, uh, see if they know a way that we might be able to get an audience uh, with uh, Keenek uh, or maybe something more nefarious. Who knows? Uh, as you are walking, you see their uh, great tent uh, before you and you hear whispered sounds but purely for how thick the tent is you can hear a, a dwarvish voice uh, that seems to be angry coming from inside the tent sounds like we are going to the right place right I mean do you think we should interrupt whatever's happening in there eh, let's stay back and watch sounds good as, He's uh, gonna take his cloak, and uh, Atta is now like tucked up in his rib cage, like with his head poking out of one of the ribs. And he's just gonna take the cloak and kind of close it a little bit and throw it up over his head. A common trait of the unwilling, trying to hide yourself uh, amongst the crowd. Uh, Zania, being that you are a Leonin, a lioness, quite literally, you are rare uh, in these parts, uh, and so it is a little bit harder for you to stand out amongst the crowd. However, as you say, you know what? You're at the entrance to this uh, little circus tent. You say, you know what? I don't think, uh, maybe we'll let them do their thing uh, and then we'll go in. You take a few steps back uh, and as you do so, Zania and Tim, you both fall backwards, tripped over two small figures 
uh, on the ground as all four of you find yourself lying on the ground in a pile of rat folk, <laughs> bones, uh, and lion bodies, uh, confused uh, and looking about you in the dark of the world, though all of you have dark vision. Oh! oh. <laughs> what is this? Oh, hi! What? Um, Hello? Excuse me? I, I, welcome to the circus. Would you like it to? Would you like to give us a tour of the town, perhaps? Um, why don't I just like jump behind you? We all get up and let's just let's go have a chat. Team, aren't you guys stuff? like trustworthy people? Mm-hmm. Uh, now would be good though. Oh, uh, no. sure. Does anyone will take the uh, hint that is uh, getting given, <laughs> and we'll just confusedly like, okay, but look at uh, Team Two and be like, what kind of luck is this? <laughs> uh, come on, let's go. I grab one of them by the hand and just pull them out of there. <laughs> she, she, she pulls your arm very quickly uh, as you begin jetting away from the circus tent. Uh, <laughs> How tall are uh, the acrobats? How tall are you? Foot? Oh. Feet. I literally. I just want to are about the size of halflings, so probably not over three, three and a half feet tall. Oh, that's so cute! Seeing acrobats in the Leonin just going, like <laughs> being pulled by the. <laughs> yeah. Because we're both over six foot, are we not? Yeah. Wonderful! <laughs> yep. I love it. Yep. Just, just want to use their bodies as well to kind of pull them along and as cover. <laughs> Like a perpetual yeah, falling. That's a nice. Motion. That's a nice cape you have there, um, skeleton-y <laughs> guy. Let me just uh, jump inside it. It's a little bit cold today. Hey, In the desert, all right with me? You can join Nata. As <laughs> Team Zania uh, and Summer seem to be running away from you, as Salt's trying to get uh, behind your cloak. Salt, <laughs> you get behind and you re recognize. Oh, this is an unwilling. I was not expecting that. And there, there is a small bone-like. Uh, cat dog cre jackal thing with wings inside his chest piece not what you signed up for but you're here now we'll make it look purple eyes staring back at you uh, um are you guys staying somewhere at the moment should we go there as summer begins to say something pretty nonchalant those voices you heard yelling from the tent before uh begin to get louder uh, as one bruiser like character uh, a, a, an orc with a bow strung over his side uh, pushes his hand out and begins looking around, uh, trying to spot uh, the rat folk that he is looking for. Uh, yeah, we were actually up the street, down a couple blocks. Um, team? We'll, uh, mm, yes. we'll take him to the place. Yeah, we might as well. We'll leave the acrobats behind us. Sounds good. <laughs> we will follow. One thing I'm going to need is all of you to head on over to roll 20, if you can. Um, and while you're on roll 20, I'm going to throw up one thing here. Give me two seconds, chat, as I move the screen over to the desktop. As this is what you currently see before you, it is a dark night. Though you all have dark vision, that doesn't mean you can see around buildings and corners. Essentially, wherever there is blackness means there's possibly a building locked uh, or something in the way. I tried to make it so that it's uh, pretty obvious to where you can see like doors to the building. There's a wagon here uh, and you're trying to head out and further down the corridor. You can see now not only the orc character, but a few others uh, are wandering, looking, trying to find the rats who stole from them, the literal rat bastards. Mm. <laughs> I take I take offense to that. Hey, we don't all know. Have control we don't of your know if our parents were married. Oh. Say what now? <laughs> we don't know if our parents were married. We could have been oh. born beautifully in I'm a very sorry. happy marriage. <laughs> um, Can you all move your characters I, yeah. accordingly? Yes. Fantastic. Yep, yep. Just I checking. So, this will be oh. kind of a real-time thing. You're in the middle of the streets in Oasis, and you're trying to both run and hide away from the people that are here. So, are we headed east or west? You are currently uh, headed to the left. Uh, so, in this case, that would be 
it, you're really uh, headed left and down, so it will be south, um, but you are currently coming out of an alleyway, so you will be headed uh, as if you're going uh, like in this direction here. Okay, uh, Andrew. Cannot see my ping, so there we are. So what are you doing? Oh, yucky. I'm staying nice and close to that wall. Yep, and keep moving. Let's not stop. Yeah. Quick, okay. quick, yep. quick, quick. Moving, guys. I'm going to casually right walk up this way. I follow the big yeah. guy. Sounds good. Uh, as you uh, head off to the side over there, you can look further down the streets. Uh, you see a uh, small campfire down towards the bottom uh, with some food bubbling mm-hmm. over the campfire next to a tent. Not uncommon for traveling merchants to just set up tents around here, uh, as well as a torch on a stone building towards the south and a bright light coming off from the alleyway next to the torch. You hear those voices getting closer and closer to where you are. You don't know that there's much time uh, to dilly-dally here. What are you doing? What direction are the voices coming from? Coming uh, back from this way. Okay. Uh... And we're pretty familiar with this area, me and Zinnia, correct? Correct. Like enough to get back to where our place is? Yeah. You need to be heading straight down, basically. Where was and that inn you we... said you stayed at? Uh, right this way. <laughs> really? <laughs> Lead away. Scary, scary, scary. I'm going to hide between these plants. There are a few <laughs> plants heading off of uh, small little, uh, I guess, planters. Uh, that there's not really a better word for it. Planters off the side of this house here. Not really much grows in the scorch, so they have to kind of make small little gardens. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> oh god, I watch too many TikTok compilations. Let's <laughs> go, let's go, let's go. Right. Uh, yeah, we'll keep going. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And they seem like they're wanting to duck down places, so instead, probably realistically, oh, okay. this way. I'm gonna yeah. stop y'all right there uh, for just oh. a moment. Uh, as you all are walking, uh, you begin to hear uh, much closer some of the uh, voices yelling, you hear a gruff orcish voice, oh, I, I think I heard him around the corner here, uh, as uh, one of your, oh, gosh, that should not have happened, whoops. Teleport, actually. Oh, the whole There we go. I went to the map I have X-ray vision now. <laughs> uh, as you begin to see uh, one of the orcish brutes uh, there, um, and a tracking wolf dog that is part of a circus act that uh, you were never too fond of and now especially are not fond of uh, as it knows your scent and is probably able to find you pretty quickly. Oh, There are buildings all around you with doors. You might be able to find your way inside. You might be able to dart off and hide in an alleyway. What do you want to do? I'd love to take a quick dip. How how far? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. How, you know how that far y'all away are is, is the a ways, like half a mile from your destination. So running there without getting caught probably not gonna happen. Can we uh, go up? Pop into we can the climb. Can, can you guys climb? I got claws. Uh, <laughs> well, they're not looking for them, are they? Nice. Go. I mean, go climb. I mean, Climb the walls, and then you be good, and you come see us. Not that, not that we're like in trouble or hiding from anyone, but I, I've heard <laughs> that the school, the oasis, is beautiful from the rooftops. Salt, should we go up there? Let's have a look. I want to see if you're you're telling me the truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can we scurry up onto one of the rooftops? Oh, absolutely. Uh, though I'm just gonna move your uh, or just move your characters to the side uh, over here because with the dynamic lighting that Roll Twenty has, I can't actually put you in the building unless you uh, go in the building. Uh, so, if you want to position yourselves over here on the right, we'll just know that that means you are up on the rooftop currently. Yep. Yep. Around the corner. Where? Um, Wait, so they successfully get on the rooftops? They have climbing uh, speed as rat folk, so they can just walk right up as if it's their day job. Well, uh, Zania's going to lean against the wall next to team and just like take her spear out and just uh, sharpen it <laughs> nonchalantly. 
<laughs> against the wall. Love it. Team, what are you doing? Team's just going to stand there, open up this cloak, look down at Ada. <laughs> I think Why we have found the that? people we are looking for. What and kind these are of good ones. strange coincidence, don't you think? Just that we like it was written that way. Wow. As wow. an orc and two really, really burly men uh, come walking around the side, they turn and see you. Um, Summer, are you back down by them now? No, I'm not meant to be. Okay, just, just curious. This is just brain not knowing how to use his <laughs> level up. Uh, no worries. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it works. As the two wolves with collars, the orc and the two burly men with uh, fists up, uh, turn around the corner, uh, they stop uh, and take a look at you. Uh, the orc points at you, team, and says, You, dead man, you seen two little rats come through here. Well, yes, there are rats everywhere. Do you not see them on the ground? Look, there goes one running right there. All of them, a, a, a little uh, dim, kind of stop uh, and look around like, where? <laughs> the orc pulls out his bow uh, and starts looking uh, around at the ground. Where are they? You... I just told you, they, they are running right no, there. Look. I'm not talking about the little rats. I'm talking about rat folk. Or, 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 or giant rats that walk on two feet. You might have seen them. I have not seen such things. Xenia, have you seen such things? No, I've seen the uh, small grats get pretty big, though. Probably, like, this big. I think they went yes. that way. Like size of kids? Yeah. Yes. Uh, big grats. So, one thing I do, uh, rather than have a billion group checks where, like, five people are rolling all at once, because then you're basically guaranteed to pass whatever group check you're doing, right? Uh, what I do instead is if one person is trying to do something, so in this case, team, you started it off, you're trying to lie to them, and you brought in Zania saying, like, what do, what do you think? So, Zania, you're helping him. So, what we're going to do then is, team, you are going to roll a deception roll, and Zania, your lie that you helped him with will give team advantage on his roll because you started it. And that's kind of how we <coughs> do things going forward. So, if you're ever like, oh, I want to... Uh, uh, you know, we're both going to try and push this rock uh, or something. Maybe there's a situation where, like, that group check will happen, but there won't be a, like, everybody rolls perception all the time. There'd be the first person to say, like, hey, I'm looking out to see uh, what else I is going on. Uh, then you say, like, oh, yeah, I'm doing that, too. Then you get it, and somebody gives you advantage on it. It'll kind of make more sense as we go. So about to roll uh, one of the giveaway D20s. Mm, Let's we'll see how it works. I've been christening Ooh. mine as well. <laughs> uh, well, and that was a two and a five. Plus <gasps> one. <laughs> oh, bones. I swear you're going to want these giveaway dice. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting out all the bad juju from him now. <laughs> Oh no, Bones Man. Oh no, Bones Man. <laughs> so, uh, the kind of beefy brawler dude who has a beer gut th could only be described as pure round. It might be his circus act, you have to think. Uh, it's like a giant exercise ball just coming out of his belly. Uh, but he does look burly as he comes up to you. He's like, Yeah, I hear what you're saying. But, uh, and he kind of reaches his hand forward uh, towards your cloak. Uh, and pulls his hand back and off of your cloak he has three small gray hairs he's like I think you might know where some rat folks be maybe wanna as he like flicks the rat folks hairs right back in your face maybe wanna change your answer there goes friend goes through your eyes <laughs> yeah it just goes through your eyes um, Do we like no. these guys from the circus, by the way? No, these are Mr. Mitten's hired goons, essentially, to keep the rest of the circus folk in line. Being in that circus is not a thing that you like. You like the gold that comes from it, but Mr. Mitten's not only runs a tight ship, he runs a horrible ship, not one that you want to be a part of. These are the ones who help keep everybody in line. You've taken a beating from I these flick, people. I flick my head in this like. direction to Summer to suggest that we should crawl up to just being above them in the rooftops in case we need to jump down. Uh, what kind of weapons, uh, apart from the orc, I know he's carrying a bow, uh, what are the other two carrying? 
the other two, uh, the one with the giant belly that's right here, uh, the other one over here is carrying a club, but the giant belly one just has some big old fists. Mm. Mm, these are people I don't want to be around. <laughs> um, I wonder so. why. Your weakness, a little from slugger. The <laughs> from the rooftop, is this another alley that we can see, like where... Is what another alley? Uh, if you hold click, uh, uh, you can kind of point things out on roll 20. Yes. Here, where we are, mm -hmm. is this like an, is this an alleyway? Uh, yes, this is an alleyway that uh, kind of leads off to more buildings off onto the side. Uh, this here is, it, uh, is, is it, a building that you're on top of. We're on top of that building, right? Is, is, yeah, you're is right it quiet, there. this alley? That's right. Yeah, it seems or pretty that we're quiet. In, on top of? No one looking? Roll me a perception. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. Spotify. Fifteen. Fifteen. You uh, and Salt peering over the top, seeing these two people lying to defend you, uh, look down over the alleyway, and as far as you can see, y'all are alone, save down towards the bottom. There is that light uh, that you saw coming from around the corner uh, that appears to be uh, like a lantern or a torch of sorts. But this alleyway right here, pretty empty. Uh, uh, hey, Sol, this looks mm. like this looks like a pretty good um, alley to do some some slight beatings. What do you think? Draw them I in. like slight beatings. Mm. Mm. Let's, uh, let's activate Pepper's tail. At the end of the alley where the salt and pepper um, characters are, but they're not actually there. Gotcha. Yep. Um, and make it obvious that like there's a tail coming out of a darkness. Ooh, trying to like distract them over here. Trying to get another run down there, yeah. and then we can all just jump on them in the cor in the corner. Yeah. All right. Let me roll. They are big old dumbs, uh, and so the one who uh, throws the uh, hairs in your face, team. Uh, says, maybe you want to change your answer. Uh, and then he suddenly sees a tail looking like it's coming out from the other end of the building uh, as he kind of points at you and he says, wait here, uh, and begins walking further down uh, the rest of the alleyway uh, as so do uh, his other friends. Again, y'all two aren't down there. That's just where your tail is, though I know that's confusing for everybody right now. Can I can I use minor illusion to make a uh like a grunt? Oh, they're following as well. They're all there, yeah. Oh, oh no, all they're all they're all following. There. Uh huh. Sweet. Let's do this. Yeah. I. All right. When they're when they're down, we're gonna get ready to to right, attack. We jump. You jump and attack? We jump on him. <laughs> Roll a stealth to see if you can get a surprise round out of this. Mm. <laughs> Come on, Wait, one. <laughs> And do we still have one more brute uh, next to us? Or yeah. Next to team? This is, yeah, the orc right there who has a bow. Okay. Uh, it is just a short bow. Okay. So 15 again. 15 I'm and 17. Okay. Before uh, I give that answer, Zania team uh, as they walk down the alleyway what are you doing just waiting so i as they were walking down i was gonna look at um team and kind of try to survey his body language to see what he would want to do okay cool as a cucumber right then, then she would follow she, just, just just looking uh looking down the alleyway knowing that they were above as these trying two... to put two and two together rat folk that you both just met uh, tall that you are uh, basically children to your size uh, you see them run by go up the building and you say I don't know where they went as they both jump down for their surprise round place yourself where you would like to jump down from the top of this building as you get your first surprise right. round after that I will do initiative and we're going to start combat off so early this time guys <laughs> who's the one that threw the look at us go who's the one that threw the Thing in the face. Uh, that would be this guy here through the. All right. Um. Before we start, oh, I'm just gonna me. let you guys 
let's know that I'm going to launch the um, giveaway. So Ooh. you'll be able to enter, which will be drawn um, at our, our halftime break. So I just wanted to let you guys know, because I know we've had quite a few questions in the chat about when it would be happening. It is starting now. How do so you enter an this giveaway, Brie? Well, you enter with, let me double check that I don't give you the wrong information. It should be exclamation point LUD, which I'm sure people are. It seems like that. Yep, there we go. That's not what they're doing. Boy, I want to enter that giveaway. Key. Okay. Can I join? <laughs> so that yeah, I just thought we'd get that we get that started before. Love it. Jeez. Um, Man, wow, there's people a lot of people on the stream. Hi, we... I uh, I promise <laughs> it'll yeah, roll better fun. for you, chat, than it will for me. <laughs> and then after right. we have um, after we have this giveaway drawn that will which will take place in our midstream break, so in an hour and a half. Does that sound right for you, Ray? Yep, sounds good. Uh, yeah, yep. about an hour and a half. We'll launch, we'll launch for the um, the second one, which we'll finish up at the end of the stream. But anyway, yeah. now that that's taken care of and chat's getting excited, yeah, we um, can... Holy crap. Uh, so I love it. All right. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All so right. place yourselves where you want to jump down from the top of the building. If there is it, that's great. If not, you have so to jump either anywhere side. within 10 feet um, from the building. Do you want to go on the other side of... Um... The guy I'm next to, so we get, a, yeah. get the advantage. Perfect. Beautiful. This is where we awesome. like to go. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, high or low, Alex? Low. Low. Bree, you get to start us off with the first combat action of the Red Wagon Inn. Oh my gosh! No Well, I'm gonna just start off with a spell then Ooh, I'm good. gonna start with dissonant whispers so I'm gonna start um, a little melody that just our friend in front of us can hear and it's just gonna be like um, oh how does this sound it's gonna be gotta get all the flavor you're gonna get dead yep you're gonna get dead don't try and take your money cuz you're gonna get dead <laughs> is that <laughs> You're gonna get dead. Uh, I love it. Her first hit single, so You're Gonna Get Dead. <laughs> song of the Summer. By Summer Von Trapp. Oh. <laughs> Literally the song so of the summer. Is, um, a save. All right, what's the save? Um, let's see what my save is. You can totally tell I'm very familiar with my character. Mm -hmm. um, it's a wisdom save. Wisdom save. What's the DC for me? It is 13. 13. Ooh. Right. That hits him with the dissonant whispers. Roll your Ooh, damage. tasty. First, first roll, oh, first taste. hit. Hmm. Okay, okay. 13 points of psychic damage, because he's going to get dead. 13 dead. points of psychic damage. Hot dang. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You hit the guy with the club so hard. Psychic, he doesn't have many brains to begin with. As you <laughs> insult him to his very, very core, uh, you can begin to see him hold the club up next to his head as he bangs against it, bangs against it, trying to get the sound out of his head, doing a sizable chunk of damage. He already is not looking very good. <laughs> All right. Yep, Anything get else dead, you're doing mate. with bonus or movement? Uh, not at the moment. Right, Salt, hit us up. Hata! That's not a knife. This is a knife. And I go and stab him in the back with um with my dagger to start with. Um and and then I'll follow through with Oi over here and my tail will come over and whip him in the head as well. Oh, I love it. Do it. All right, roll first action. for the dagger is the tail will be a sneak attack. Alright. Our dagger is hitting on oh, fifteen plus five twenty. 20 definitely Two hits. Zero. For a d4 plus 3, so 5 damages. 5 damages. He looks like he's barely standing up. Uh, as you take your dagger, uh, knowing uh, that he's racking his brain, you stab your dagger right into the side of his kidney and pull it out, dripping blood off of your blade. That's a good a question. Chunk. Do I get sneak attack on both? 
Uh, so you get one per round, right? So okay, it's one per round. Cool. However, you did nice hit try, with wait. your dagger. Uh, you get to choose, like, so if the dagger hits, right, you can say that's a sneak attack, or you can say like I'll wait and try and sneak attack with the uh, tail whip if you want, but you've already hit, so you can guarantee it if you want to add the sneak well, attack. Well, thematically, my tail is the sneak because they don't expect it, so gotcha. we're gonna go for that. Okay, sounds good. Now go for your tail attack. All right. Well, that's only going to be an 11. Ooh, 11 just barely misses, actually. Uh, I will uh, give you, actually, uh, a point of inspiration for sticking to your character and going for your tail for the sneak attack, even though you already got it with your dagger. So good job on role-playing your character. The way I do points of inspiration is you can have one at any given time, use it or you lose it, because once you have a point of inspiration, you can't get more than that. So your maximum inspiration is at one, and you can use it to reroll any roll that you would like. So you can take a point for playing your character very well. Thank you. Though as a result, ah! he is still up as your tail begins to whip at him, but he's given you beatings before. He holds his hand up and catches your tail in midair before you slink it back out of his hand. I need an initiative roll from everybody. Okay. Let's grab an initiative. That's my initiative. Ooh. Damn it! I thought the bird was off. Not 20! Oh, yeah. solid. Yeah. Let's see. So I think Bree's first. <laughs> I don't know. 24? That's, 20, that's a 23. Damn it. Damn mm. it, brother. Hold on. Uh, I'm... So I will say, well, yeah, okay, so Salt, you're actually going to go first. However, with the nat 20, the way I do it, and people may not do it this way, but this is the way I do it. If you get a nat 20, you have advantage on your first attacks for the first round. If you get a nat 1, you have disadvantage on those. And same thing goes for saves and stuff. So if you do a spell that requires them to save on the first round, if you have a nat 20, they have disadvantage. It's just a fun way to add an extra 20 and a 1 to uh, initiative rolls. So you will have advantage on your stuff. However, Salt, did you get like a 19 or something? I did plus 5, so 24. Nice. So you will still go first. You just don't have the advantage. That's fine. My awesome. What do you got for me, Drew? Advantage. Uh, 18. 18. All right. Jackie. We'll take away 10, and that's an 8, so... <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. And let me roll for the bad guys. The way I do bad guys <laughs> is all bad guys go at the same time, but I pick one bad guy to roll as, and then uh, if you have allies, all allies are going to go at the same time. Just speeds up combat. And with that... Uh, Y'all are lucky, because all the bad guys are going last. Sad, sad rolls. Uh, I'm trying to break in these dice, too, for everybody, who, or for the winner of these dice. <laughs> really selling them, guys. Really yeah, I know. Selling these dice. We make really good dice. I don't I know if you know this. swear, as dice makers, we do a good job. <laughs> They're just a little screen shy, you know? Yeah. Their first show. It's the first time. They don't roll well for those that make them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that's it is. So true. True. That's why we make them to get rid of them. Right. <laughs> right. So let's start it off. Salt, what do you want to do as your follow-up for the first round of combat? So the, my tail's going to land. So we're going to go for another hit. There you the go. Tail. Go for the tail. <laughs> and the answer is, oh, oh, I guess that's going to be one more than it. So 7 plus 5, 12. 12 is exactly what you need. Yay. So we'll hit them with my tail. I'll go, huzzah, feel this whip. That's, yes, that works. <laughs> Let's go with that. Five, seven plus three, ten damages. Ten damages. Love it. You overkill a lot. Uh, as your tail, yeah. he grabs it out of your hand and kind of looks at you with a smirk, thinking, ha ha, I've, I've fought you before, but you think I've been holding back as your tail whips him right in the jugular so much it's like a knife across his neck as the... <clears throat> <laughs> the burly man falls to his death. Hey, Ugh. I mean, first death. Nice. First then, kill of the game. That is my bonus. <laughs> yeah. First kill. Mm. yeah. Okay. As a bonus action, I will disengage and go stand next to my. Ooh. I am gonna have to try and keep track uh, of who gets what kills and stuff. Uh, we need to have a running counter somewhere uh, of stats for everybody. I mean, I believe um, our penguin is the official kill counter collector, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. No, yes. 
We need to have Penguin McCool's mm -hmm. kill count. The most oh kill. McCool, you have to be now, has it? I know McCool's yeah, you need to bring him out so we can <laughs> read. <laughs> right, after that, <laughs> um, Summer, it's your go. Um, Question. Answer. Our tails. Mm hmm. Oh great! Our tails. Um, I can use. I can use it as a bonus action, right? Correct. To mm -hmm. get to whippy. Do a whip attack. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. In that case, um, I'm going to, um, yell over at at this dude over here mm -hmm. and say, um, do you even lift? It doesn't even look like you're that muscly. And cast um, <laughs> vicious mockery. <laughs> Which is a 13 wiz save. Oh, 13 wiz save, you said? I always thought he had the mm -hmm. most oh, muscles. Man. I am trying to break these dice in, I swear. That's a nat 1. Oh, no. As you say, you don't even uh, lift. He crushed he, him. He looks down at his sweaty belly <laughs> from being so big and running this. He thought he was doing such a good job, but you just hurt him to his core. How much damage are you doing? Um, That's just... <laughs> Four points of him being sad. Four points of sadness damage. <laughs> Sad heart damage. What does it do? Psychic, psychic, of course. They have um, a disadvantage just on making this attack, feel really right? Bad about this uh, yes, they sure do. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to make a tail whip just to rub it in. Um, oh, love it. I'm going to... So move forward as I'm yelling that, and then... Is it, five, is it a five-foot range? Does that mean we can do it from where we are? Uh, you have to hit them next to them. It's like attacking with a dagger. Yeah. It's okay. a five-foot range. Um, good thing I had advantage on that, because I rolled a two. Why do you have then... advantage on it? Because I rolled a net 20. Oh. Remember? Oh, shoot, that that's right. That I'm sorry, my advantage. own rules. I, I was so enraptured <laughs> not, by the, uh, the sadness up, damage. <laughs> Go somewhere um, <laughs> 16 to hit. 16 does hit. What What does it do? What type of slashing damage do we do? I know I have plus, plus four. Sorry? Plus your dex. D4 plus your dex. Yep. D4 plus my dex. Beautiful. And you can use so the like plus your dex. I can't yeah. sick roast. I love it, Cult of Salon. Mm -hmm. Sick roast. Sweet. So that's five points of um, slashing damage. Ooh, five points of slashing. Y'all, the rats are putting on the hurt. As <laughs> as he looks sad, you whack him in the belly and just... Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he looks... Just, that just strong. really, <laughs> really rubs it in. Like, what is that? Do you even lift? <laughs> It, it's it's more oh extra God. sad Ruined damage than it is life. anything slashing. It's a lot like a towel in a locker room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Right. Uh, let's go on to team. Show us what you got. Uh, so team's going to move uh, behind the orc. Uh, so like traveling uh, up to and then behind. And as he does that, he's looking back at Xenia. He says, you are two cucumber, two cucumber. Which makes no sense to anyone, and that's okay. <laughs> no. Even the DM. <laughs> uh, and then he, uh, as he's moving, he's pulling out a uh, shield in his long sword, and I assume that counts as a full action. No, no, we do uh, draw weapons as free actions. That's no fun to have to waste an action. All Ooh. right, fair enough. In that case, uh, I'm gonna hold up the shield and whack him with my long sword. Love it, and you can only do but, uh, one, so you can't be like. Hit with a great sword, then I pull out my shield or anything like that. Yada yada. Gotcha. Uh, so uh, describe your uh, long sword so... just for theme, real quick, because people. Oh need to yeah, hear yeah. That. So the long sword, it's it's stylized after a scimitar, but it's much longer, and on the hilt is a jackal head um, to portray Anubis. Uh, very sleek. It, the handle like offsets from the blade. It's it's very strange looking. I'll throw up pictures on my Instagram later. That way you should follow but with that, things. I rolled an 11 plus 7, or wait, no, plus 3, so that's going to be um, a 14 to hit. Ooh, you do hit, actually. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's a 7 slashing damage. Ooh, 7. As you take uh, your long sword and your shield, you slash it down for the first time having to use your long sword in a while uh, you bring it down into him as it cuts deep into his shoulder 
He is not looking good at all. As soon as he does this, he screams out, oh, What are you doing? You can tell he is far more bark than he is bite. <laughs> Anything else? Cucumber. Thank you. Nope. <laughs> Uh, right then. Zania, hit us up, Lioness. All right. So, will this dog get an attack of opportunity on me if I uh, leave its range? Uh, it would now that team has attacked somebody and they definitely recognize y'all as a threat. Got it. All right. So, <laughs> lion versus dog. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm just going to can I just like look down on this dog next to me and eye it and it's probably going to start growling at me. And I'm just going to like Sorry, bud. And I'm going to take my spear out and I'm going to shove it into its head. <laughs> oh, God. Brutal. Confession to be laughing. It. I promise we're not murder hobos. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Uh, oh, no, no. Oh, no, it's not good. Oh, no. That oh. It's never good. Plus four. That's the ten. Oh, just barely not enough. Uh, hit. As, as you roar out with your fierce lion roar, the wolf growls back at you and your hesitation to kill a, a dog you presume to be innocent stops you from hitting as hard as you need to as it slides off the side of the wolf's hard fur uh, as it braces against the blow and then it looks up with you snarled fangs now very angry for what you've done at first she felt bad now she's not gonna feel bad <laughs> there you go next hit, next hit will happen the other wolf turns its attention yeah. towards you now as well oh no Anything else you're doing? Uh, um, no, I'm going to stay. Sounds good. Let's go yes. to the baddies turn. All right. So this time I get to do stuff to you. So let's start with the wolves. Why not? Let's go <laughs> right into them. Uh, these two wolves, they would have gone after uh, the rat folk. However, uh, they are not a big fan of Zinnia. And now they also, because there's two wolves next to each other, have pack tactics. So they're going to get advantage on their attacks. Mm -hmm. So let's see. That is one crit. And I'm going to attack with the other one. And the other one did not happen at all. So basically two hits <laughs> coming from them. So let me get the damage here. So that is going to be... 12 points of piercing damage coming your way. That is a solid These are strong bite. dogs. <laughs> the other one that comes up tries to bite you, but you sidestep out of the way. But in doing so, the one that you tried to spear finds its way right onto your forearm and bites down ferociously. You barely manage to pull away. I need you to make a strength saving throw. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, that's... Uh, 14. 14, you are fine. It tries to pull you down prone to the ground, but you're strong, Lioness, and you will not be pulled down by no wolf as you pull your forearm away. I'm gonna, like, growl and then bare my teeth. <laughs> the three animalistic, uh, two lions, one lioness, begin their growling match towards each other as the big-bellied one, saddened by its attack uh, from Summer, is going to try and attack back at her. However, he is at disadvantage. Right, the disadvantage yep, mattered yep. Uh, as he... He goes, oh, I'll show you Buffa. And through his tears, he's not able to uh, make the connection that he wants to. As some of you easily <laughs> sidestep out of the way. The uh, orc archer here uh, turns his attention to the one who put a long sword uh, in his back. Uh, and he, you can tell he's not actually much of a fighter at all. He's, again, more bark than bite. He... He, he holds up his bow a little haphazardly. You would never try and fight at range up in melee uh, as he has disadvantage on this attack. Why uh, you do this? It's still enough to hit you, uh, but uh, it does... Ooh, but is it with a shield? Uh, does your AC... Oh, yeah, your AC would go up. You gave me your regular AC, so it goes to 18, right? Yes, sir. Then no, it is not. Your shield does matter. Uh, as he has this is a bad idea, my friend. <laughs> it goes right into the shield. Uh, he's like right here as it does it. There was no way it wasn't going to go into your shield. Uh, amateur move. Um, as that is the bad guy's turn, you can tell these are not professional fighters, more just hired bruisers. As let's go back to Salt. Summer, you have lost your advantage now. Okay. Oh. 
that's me. That that do I'm be like, you. <laughs> yep. I'm like, yep, yep. I'm I'm with it. I was just <laughs> congratulating our penguin in chat. Go. No. Through. All right. <laughs> so. <laughs> um. So I'm gonna come up next to the brute and next to summer and hit him a couple of times. We're gonna go. Pwah! Throw the knife into the other hand because I can, and hit him with that knife. And then flick him over the tail again. Ooh, I like it. Go for the uh, knife attack first. Are you? Uh, I'll let you choose when you do sneak attack. You just tell me. Always on the tail. Always on the tail. I like it. That's why Always the inspiration. Tail. Oh, that's a good hit. That's going to be like a twenty-three. That definitely Ooh. hits. What? Ah! See, my left hand is as good as my right, or even better. Ha! I'm not left-handed either. Um. <laughs> And let's do uh, five damage with that one. Five damage. As you flourish the dagger, team and Zinnia, uh, though you're in the middle of combat, you see those juggling skills come out as he flicks it over into his left hand, as you stab it directly into his good punching arm as he uh, reaches over in pain now. Hit him with that tail attack. <laughs> and uh, the tail comes out from uh, between my legs and shoots straight up because it's a true sneak attack. Oh. <laughs> that very true sneak attack. Roll for your hit. I'm going to use my inspiration because that's a three. Okay, um, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> All right. In my throat, that's better. 15 plus 5 is 20. That definitely hits. Hit me with that sneak attack. Ha ha! Damage. The tail was mightier than the sword. That's um, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 damage. 14 damage, you said? 14 damage in the in the nuts. Ooh. Cold nice. shot to the nuts. <laughs> That's two kills for Salt as the sadness that is poured over him, the the whipping on the belly uh, from before and now the humiliation of the uh <laughs> the sack whack with the tail. It's just sack too whack. much for his psyche. It's not even that he couldn't go on. His mind implodes from the humiliation of being destroyed by these two small rat folks, as you have killed the man with the largest belly in the entire world. <laughs> the man with the large belly. Is that what his name was in the circus? Oh, gosh. Uh, what do you want his name to have been in the circus? Let's see. Who's the first person I see in chat? Who has the largest belly in the world? <laughs> Hunerith, you have the largest Who's belly the biggest in the belly world. in chat? Let's see. That is uh, Hunerith99. That's <laughs> the largest belly in the world. <laughs> I'm writing it down so that it's canon. <laughs> yep. Right. Like Death by smack whack. You have a little bit of uh, movement left if you want to use it, Salt. Definitely. Let's go up and uh, help out this new friend of ours. Love it. Uh, we do do flanking here. You just have to be absolutely opposite, so I am totally uh, into the uh, flanking side. And speaking of flanking, team, it's your go. So team's going to stop, and he's going to put down his shield. He's going to look at this orc and say, friend. This is bad idea. I, I can see you see this is a bad idea. Pull off your puffers. <laughs> Ooh. Are you trying to intimidate or persuade him? Um, I should probably intimidate. I, even if I did try and persuade, it would probably come off more intimidating anyway. That's fair. Give me an intimidation <laughs> roll. And for things like this, when we uh, just... I feel like in the first episode I have to clarify a lot of rules, sorry. So, things like this where you're attempting to make something change, like uh, if you're like, ah, oh, I want to run and do a backflip off that wall to jump up to the next ledge or something, right? Uh, you're going to use your action to uh, do this. So, your action will be attempting to intimidate him into submission. Okay. You good with that? Yeah, I'm good with that because cool. that's a 16. Ooh, 16. Let's see. Let's I would have been good with it if it wasn't good either. <laughs> that is another nat one as the orc profusely bleeding from the shoulder. You can see, you, you, you tell him, why are you doing this? Come on, call off your dogs. Uh, as he 
drops his bow. Uh, as you kind of get a little bit better look at it, it is basically a stick with a string on it, and his arrows mimic that kind of sharp stick aesthetic. Uh, as he drops look, his bow, you, he, uh, I'm sorry, I was just doing what Mr. Mittens told me. Uh, he, he pays, if, I'm sorry, don't hurt off, me, don't hurt me. Oh, no, no, oh, it's, it's okay. If you call off dogs, my friend, she'll heal you. Uh, Mutz, get over here. Uh, something in German. To, <laughs> to nine. Nine. <laughs> Whatever. Right. Nine. 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 Uh, as, uh, he tries to call off the wolves. Uh, when we go to the wolves' turn, we'll see if that was effective to them or not. Anything else you're doing with your bonus or movement team? Um, I'm gonna move to the opposite side of him. Okay. And kind of be in between. Um, kind of be in between. Oh, I guess I could move myself. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to go boop doop 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 and right next to the puppers. Actually, right right here on okay. the opposite side. Sounds good. Just so if I need to, I can I can come in. Zania, what are you doing? So her spear is still in the ground next to the um, dog's head. Mm -hmm. And then she looks at the team. And here's what he says about healing and giving up. Not giving up. Um, you know, calling off the offensive. She's just going <sighs> to... And then just yank it out of the dirt. Do a twirl. Put it back in her back. It's going to be like... <sighs> Whatever team says I do. So, you're lucky. You uh, attempt Ooh. to... <laughs> docilely pull your weapon away from the uh, wolves and... An effort to stop the fighting between uh, the bestial nature between you two. Uh, we'll give you also an attempt at persuading. Uh, actually, animal handling is what this would be. So roll me an animal handling. Okay, let's see how this goes. Actually, we'll say that uh, Tim's roll was good enough that you get your advantage on your animal handling. Oh, well, that's good because that was a natural one. <laughs> that is good then. <laughs> <laughs> we make good dice, I swear. <laughs> you know, it's the lopsided trait. That's what I blame. I'm going to fix that. Mm -hmm. okay. Blame the tray. Oh, that's better because that's a 19. Oh, a 19. Let me see here. Mm. Anything else you're doing on your turn while I roll this? Uh, no. Sounds good. Right, you pull your uh, spear up and your animalistic nature seems to speak to the wolves nearly directly. They bear fangs, but... It was only because you tried to attack them first. The one nearest you kind of growls but backs off before he backs right into Salt, uh, who has his knife and tail uh, out and ready as the other one also backs away uh, as they both begin to try and slink over to their orc uh, master. You don't know. Uh, you've never uh, seen them, Zinnia and Tim, as they both walk over there like docile dogs uh, beaten by their competitors with that da, 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 the first combat <laughs> session of the red wagon inn you have succeeded Yay. and you didn't spill Yay. all the blood what an omen for what is to come and we just hit oh. hype train level one in chat Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. The hype is real i am a twitch noob so i don't know what that means but yay <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the I'm on the noob train with you on that one, because I don't either. Good. Did Somebody you? explain it. I'm I sure. don't know either, but it says hype train level two now, so. Oh, good. Nice. Thanks, chat. No idea what it does. <laughs> Thank you, chat. Big Looks mood. Cool, Thanks, though. chat. We should do like stuff when hype. things like hype trains happen or something. I don't know. <sighs> probably. Let's see here. So <laughs> we're evolving the puppers. Uh, then we probably get to the next level. <laughs> name the puppers. Oh no. Oh, name the puppers. <laughs> Ooh. You know what? Uh, we'll oh. see how that comes here in just a moment. I'm going to scroll uh, down for the chat to see something. Uh, as you all begin to stop the violence, put, wiping your blades clean, uh, that light that you saw earlier, uh, there seems to be <laughs> another uh, adventurer carrying uh, a torch uh, walking y'all's way from down towards the bottom uh, as you stand here next to two bodies, uh, but then the orc and the wolves. He's, look, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll tell, uh, I'll tell Mr. Mittens you got away. Uh, uh, um, 
Oh gosh, he's... Tell him you killed. Tell him we're dead. Tell him you're dead. Yep. W why? Because we were no match for an amazing fighter like you. Simply the beer. You. Oh. And as they're saying that, I'm gonna walk up and then put my hand on his shoulder, and I'm gonna cast um, healing word just to help our case out a little bit. So nice. I love it. Five points of health back. Five points. That's almost full uh, back from what you took away from him. So he is he's looking mighty good. As you uh, cast over, give me a description of what your spells look like. Uh, I like to hear the flavor from uh, spells as they come out. The other ones were mockery uh, and sadness-esque spells, but I want to hear the magic that comes from you, Tempest Cleric. Ooh, so her big paw comes over, and then you feel like the rough pad touch like the against the um shoulder uh texture and but then you see a little warm red warmth go through from her, her paw to the shoulder At and first... oh, go ahead. Continue. and um that way you can really say that they were no match for you at first the uh warmth he kind of expecting something very painful uh, as you grasp onto his shoulders. The wolves kind of growl for a second, but then he begins to feel the healing aura as he... Oh. Oh. He looks over uh, at the two rat folk that he knows uh, and is not necessarily friends with, but a long time traveler with, and he... Oh. Fine. Fine. I will tell them that I killed you and that you killed Inorath in the program in the process. I, I must know, did you truly take his coin? Ah, uh, look. Whose coin it was is a matter of opinion, really? Isn't it? Yeah, it's everyone's coin, right? He takes... Yeah, you can be sure that he's pocketing more than he's giving out. We were just redistributing. Fine. Yeah. I reach into the hat and give him one. One See? coin. Distribution of wealth. The penguin takes a breath. <gasps> oh my <Yeah>. god. <laughs> oh, no. uh, about time. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, you've got half an hour of uncool chill. As you push him back down into the hat and put it right back on. <laughs> uh, as uh, the orc reaches over uh, and takes the coin from you as he... Okay. Hmm. All right. Oh, I'll, I'll see that I killed you, and we'll forget that this happened. <clears throat> and and we didn't have the coin. That's why you couldn't bring it back. All right, it works fine. Uh, as the wolves stop and turn uh, and kind of growl uh, at the uh, other person walking by. Uh, with a torch uh, in his hand uh, as uh, it appears to be a uh, young half-elven man uh, with a pack slung on his back. Uh, you've seen wide-eyed adventurers like this before, though based on the look at him, there's no way he made it to the Scorch on his own. He must have been born here. Uh, as he is just walking through the streets as he's, uh, hi-oh, how, how, how's it going tonight? Uh, as he's walking by, not really paying much attention, but backing kind of away from the wolves uh, but he does turn uh, and see the two bodies of one, uh, Hinnereth, the world's largest belly, uh, and uh, the other companion, uh, as he says, oh, my gosh, was, was this some, some sort of scuffle? What happened here? Uh, we're actually just preparing for a play. We're in show business, you see. Ta-da! They're not really dead. And I start juggling you should some come nerves. and see the show. The show, as he uh, he steps forward, thinking you mean the show, as in the the two people laying oh, on the ground. No, 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 no. This is a rehearsal. You see, we'll be we'll be performing uh, with Mitten Circus. I, I I heard about them. I I heard they performed at the arena today. I hadn't the coin to go, but it, it's, oh, you must be miming some sort of gladiatorial act. Uh, and roll me a deception. And if anybody wants to help her out, you can. I'm definitely helping out. How are you helping her so out? So I get advantage? 
Depends. How are you well, helping I'm, her out, I'm, Salt? I'm doing... I'm juggling some knives right now because we're performing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can make that happen. Some nice sharp knives. N the sharpest. I just want to let you all know that I did roll a one for the first roll. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Our rolls are um, amazing. We make dice, yeah. we don't roll them. Hey, hey. I didn't make these ones. The red I can blame someone else. We make dice. We don't roll them. <laughs> <laughs> that's we don't roll them. Um, deception. Oh, that's going to be an 18, though. Ah, solidly yeah. better. Let's see what this wide-eyed half-elf thinks. Oh, uh, uh, he's enamored by the juggling going on, being that the juggling is what saved. Wow, uh, I've never seen rat folk, let alone those that juggle. I, I'll have to catch you tomorrow. I, you know, I think I will splurge and spend the coin. Uh, good man. choice. Anyway, don't don't spoil the show now. Off you go. Uh, all right then. H have a good night. Uh, those two are quite good. Uh, he points to those who are uh, dead uh, on the ground. <laughs> They're good actors. V very pool very, of blood very, forming very. around them. Uh, as he uh, marches his way off uh, and down the streets. Uh, I'm actually going to be walking over to Zinnia and <laughs> be like. Uh, I don't know if you have noticed, but the dog has bit you. Oh, yeah, they did. Uh, and she kind of just like stretches out. She's like, I'll, I'll handle that. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, I can just... Uh, just let me. Let me use what you have taught me. I'm going to attempt to do a medicine check. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Roll me a medicine check, yeah. How are you attempting to? Oh yeah, I like descriptions. Uh, I'm literally taking off some of like the bandages, like off my skeleton. <laughs> like some old gonna rusty like around. mummy band-aids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you roll? That's a nineteen plus zero. Oh, plus oh zero. Okay. yeah. Right. So she has uh, told me well. We'll say. Okay, so she's gonna stand with her hands on her hips. Like, all right, and then you just watch. Zania, you, goes. you kind of step back for just a second as you see him pull one of the dirty old uh, pieces of cloth off of his uh, <laughs> bony dragonborn horn. But you trust Jenna, him, he wouldn't hurt you intentionally. I've uh, touched worse, I guess. Uh, as you go over oh, and it, begin to it is her dirty. I'm sorry, here. Pop <laughs> and prestigitation. I'm going to clean it and make it nice and pretty before I apply it. Sorry, right, I forget sanitation, medicine. I... <laughs> you feel yeah. much better now, Zinnia. <laughs> How As many you points of health is that? Rip it off and tie it around. <laughs> Being that medicine isn't your main check, uh, but it is still uh, a, a good effort, uh, and it stems the blood flowing from the arm, though the blood is still fresh on the uh, lips of the wolf nearby. It does heal you for 2 HP. Okay, cool. cool, cool. She'll, and she'll stand there and it'll tingle a little bit. She's like, you're learning uh, quite fast. Impressive. Me, you don't walk around the earth for 100 some odd years and not learn something. At this. Uh, <laughs> no humble brags. Not at all. all. Right, I think we should probably leave these bodies and go. Uh, do you think we should at least yeah. prop them up? Make them look nice? Uh, I... Make them look like they're having little campfire. I don't know. Let's put them in a hugging position. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, I think people are going to find them and they're going to be pretty dead either way. But we can make them hug <laughs> if that makes you feel better. It makes me feel much better. This is a good idea. Okay. What is your name, little one? Uh, uh, Summer, Von, we're the Von Trap twins. Nah, I am team. I'm the other team, Himutranu. Wahada Atanuawa, Wahada Rajul Adin Zinia. Yeah, that's really Amazing. cool. <laughs> it's really nice to meet you. And um, look, thank you so much for for your support. Uh, in that little scuffle. It was really just a bit of a misunderstanding. Uh, quite unfortunate that it ended the way it did. But 
um, look, I mean, sometimes that happens. They're not the nicest of people. If I'm going to be, if I'm going to be real with you, you may have noticed by the like... fact that they were trying to kill us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the orc stuff. The orc that's still there as y'all are conversing. Oh, we just try to be nice. It's, it's our job. Oh, so, I'm so sorry, mate. I thought you'd left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, that. Uh, all that yeah, for a few coin. Uh, fine. I'll, I'll leave. Uh, as, uh... Before you leave, friend, um, <laughs> if I may make a small suggestion, uh, this line of work does not seem like it works out for you very well. Uh, I would suggest maybe going into pottery. You think That's... me, a potter, with these strong hands? Uh, as he picks up his stick bow uh, and, like, stick arrows. I am one of the finest crafters of bows that you've ever seen. I just... Uh, well, yeah, you can definitely that apply that to pottery. This, uh, it is a beautiful bow. It would look nicer with clay on it. Uh... Give me one second. You know, I, uh... The weight has been off balance. I've never thought of putting clay on the end of a bow to strengthen it. Hmm. You've given me yes, a, a lot to think about with your yes. kindness. While this is happening, DM, yep. where did he put that gold coin? Yep. Uh, I was <laughs> it right in his uh, side pocket. You going to try and take it? Sure. <laughs> Sounds good. You have the two wolves next to you as well, just FYI. Perfect. Okay. I've got it. Roll me a. All right, check. I just ro I rolled a fortune favors die, so yeah. Do actually set uh, a hand oh. on this, cause yeah. Do I see so, him do this? Uh, well, let's see. You're actively watching. Roll a uh, perception to see if you see him do it. Okay. Nineteen plus seven. Oh, Twenty. Oh, I was nice plus to you. Plus seven. Holy crap. You are great to me, Bree. <laughs> I'm glad I'm nice Ooh. to you. Seeing you when other people roll it. Though. What did you get, Jackie? <laughs> Uh, 17. 17. So, that is enough to see it happen. However, uh, you're not sure what he took. Uh, you're, you're able oh. to see him just kind of... It, it almost looks like he pats the side of uh, the orc down. Uh, however, the orc makes uh, no change, and the wolves do not react with a 26. I was just going to pretend to like try to clean my feet and kick up some dirt into the dog's eyes so they wouldn't oh, see. <laughs> The wolves are sitting there a little docile. Uh, yeah, we'll say that you do help. Uh, you see him uh, begin to go for like a uh, go for what he's doing uh, as you uh, kind of <coughs> as you uh, kick up with your foot as one of the dogs <coughs> kind of fashes back. The one now with blood, uh, your blood on its mouth now is covered in sand, and that'll be uncomfortable for the dog. Yeah, take that. <laughs> and then of course the the coin appears in my tail, sneaks past, and it, it's handed to Summer's tail, who then takes good care of the coin gives it to very very carefully slides it into slides it. von penguin von cool <laughs> slides it up into the top hat with that the orc mm -hmm. bows and says thank you for your kindness especially you letting us i will not forget it that's not Ooh. right uh, <laughs> as oh gosh uh things are behaving <laughs> strangely uh, but he begins. So stupid, lots. They <laughs> walk off and away. You all find yourselves in this alleyway with now new made friends. Uh, as nothing really puts a friendship together, uh, quite like uh, the first time you're meeting somebody killing for them. Uh, hmm. <laughs> true. Mm -hmm. Did they? Did you guys kill? Uh. You know, technically they didn't. Up. Technically, nope, we just Tim watched you guys even, murder. Tim didn't even do anything. He just convinced him not. Salt did two murders. Did two murders. I introduced him to yeah. a new life. Mm -hmm. One that's not here. Nothing like a yeah, life exactly. in the afterlife. Somewhere else. Hmm. <laughs> I love it. Um, should we get away from these dead bodies? Is probably. Uh, should we get get off chuff off oh, to yes. that tavern that we talked about? 
Uh, yes, what, but one moment, Salt, come help me. Let's let's go ahead and get these bodies uh, where they should be. Let's do the yeah. hug. Mm. Yep. Do the I'm hug. gonna start moving them into a hug. <laughs> dead <laughs> hug. Very good. It's called a dead hug. The death hug. I saw it's somebody in the chat say the eternal burial. embrace. <laughs> Yeah, is is this tradition where you are from? I, I love good tradition. Yes. The embrace of death. Mm. embrace. This mm. is good. This is good. Zania, you uh. and uh, your newfound rat folk uh, friend Summer stand and watch the uh, the two males in the group go force the uh, largest body or largest belly in the world, uh, hugless <laughs> friend, uh, as. Based on his giant belly, it's basically his friend laying over it like an exercise ball <laughs> with blood <laughs> on the ground around them. They just look uh, a little drunk. I think you guys did fine. Yes, I think we did good as well. We should go back to the inn. Uh, now. Yeah. Uh, I think you did well, but we should leave. <laughs> right. With that, uh, yes. we're going to have y'all walk back to the end, and I'm going to swap over screens back to our beautiful faces being so much bigger, because now we can Yay. don't need the visual anymore. That's what everyone needs. More of us. More of us. Ooh, look at us. Look, is, if, is this okay? Hi. We're good. <laughs> we're good. Thank you so much Pat, for getting behind. Oh my gosh, the support's unreal. Oh yeah, this yeah. is awesome. Absolutely. I actually That's haven't gone seen crazy. how many people that we It's hard to catch up, yeah. Dude, we got I mean, I just don't pay people. attention to the, to the combat. I just keep an eye on chat. <laughs> 300 plus people. What an amazing first time stream. And we're going to keep it going. Yeah. But as a matter of fact, Absolutely. I think this might actually be a decent time to take a quick little break if that works for everybody Ooh. here. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. that means. It's mm -hmm. time to win some dice. Oh. <gasps> that giveaway. Ooh. Exclamation so, mark. Yeah, guys, guys. Yep, get it in now. We'll give you how about we go for another eight minutes and then we'll close off the um in terms of the getting the, the entries in and we'll close off the giveaway. Maybe we can do that when we come back. Get your exclamation so, LUDs in by nine PM. We'll come back here in about ten minutes uh, and we will continue. So we will see you all then. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Welcome back, I'm everybody. Back. We are back. <laughs> not at all due to more technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> that just, that's hey, not how we roll. Well, it's still time. Still We've still got time. so much time. But now that we do have time, and now that we be back, I think it's time that we give some dice away. How about that? Ooh. I'm ready. What a how great idea. idea. I throw up the dice that whoever is going to win today here uh, on this stream. Those Ooh. will be Drew's Ooh. team Have theme sand dice. Have we the stream back to us? Ah, uh, yes. Us. Uh, so, uh, fun fact about these dice are uh, they're almost uh, almost identical to the ones I'm actually rolling tonight. Now, Drew, how many pretty. tries did it take for you to get that set that you were happy with? It only took six times. <laughs> A labor of love. Six, it was only six. Six tries for labor of love to you guys. Mm -hmm. Stunning. Mm -hmm. Love it. All right. Are we ready? Let's give it away. Let's We're do ready. it. Let's see who it be. Give it away now. How's it, it work? In... <gasps> Done. Was it? Did, it, did it tell everyone? Yep, Agriorato has won an ace of hands. Agriogato. Congrats on the Drew Ooh, Dice, Agriogato. I apologize for it saying it at AA because um, <laughs> the bot put an A in front of it for me as well. Oh, did it? <laughs> a -A. Congratulations, Mr. Spanish Cat. I don't Congratulations. know what the is. <laughs> we have another giveaway that we're going to do. Do you want to show, before we get into it, do you want to show what, what the next one is for the yeah. end of the stream? Let's Ooh. throw up my dice on there too. So mm. congrats to Agriogato for the beautiful set from Drew. Mm. I am eternally jealous. Uh, Should I'm that throw... be one of the names of the, of the two dogs? <laughs> oh, Agrio Ooh, yeah. and Gato, even though Gato Ooh. means cat. Those are the two dogs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
Right. We have okay. my set here, which is the Mana Pearl set. And the winner of this one is going to get the Mana Pearl dice set. They're also going to get the Mana Pearl dice box that comes with it and the two dice bags that uh, Ray sent to me so that I could learn how to actually make dice bags for my latest video. So you're going to get a plethora of things to the winner of this one. Set, box, two bags. You just get stickers and, with um, me. <laughs> How do you how do you want us to go about um, getting this information? Are you happy for them to contact you on Instagram, or just send us a whisper yeah. here and I can pass it on? Uh, uh, that would be preferable for me on Insta. Insta would be yeah. awful for um, me. Looks like looks like Agri isn't here right now, so we'll just have to contact him via DM. Yeah, it's probably going to be best that we do a DM right. too, in case okay. somebody makes like I am Agrio on Insta yeah. or. Twitter or something very cool. Uh, absolutely. I will I will I will find you and we will get that information. And so I am going to open up the competition for which will be drawn at the end of our um stream as well for those amazing dice that that we had from Mr. Ribonator. Pew pew. So sorry while I eat my Vegemite sandwich. God. You guys are so just... rat folk with your Vegemite sandwiches. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, how's a boot? All right. We get right so back you into get it. Your, um, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to say you'll be able to start getting your entries in for, for this one as well, as soon as it, it pops up. Boom. Loving it. All right. <laughs> mess with this real quick because I don't want it to be laggy and I think making it that big is just going to make it laggy so right then let's get right Ooh. back into it uh, make sure yeah. that you enter for the dice giveaway that is exclamation point LUD and now let's get back into the show so where we stopped uh, you just gave the eternal embrace uh, to uh, let's see Hinnereth uh, Hinnereth 99 uh, and uh, <laughs> Companion, uh, the world's largest belly, and we're heading off towards the inn in which you typically frequent, correct? Yes. Correct. They frequent, yes. Fantastic. Is there anywhere that you're wanting to be stopping along the way or just a straight shot to the inn so that you can have a conversation? I think we'd want to go straight just because... Um... The acro folk just want to just get out, and then dead bodies just leave everything and just go. <laughs> awesome. Sounds good. I like the way she thinks. <laughs> Let's head on there then. Yeah. So, uh, we're wow. going to. Sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds right. Let, Tally let... Ho. Oh, go ahead. Tally oh, ho. Tally ho, Sachi. <laughs> Gosh, uh, non Americans. Ugh, what do they say? <laughs> Non-American. Non-American. Because <laughs> America's the only country, and everyone else are non-American. Right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I say That's... nothing. I say nothing. Yeah, it's not ex that well. Never mind. So uh, let's <laughs> let's get you all down to the end. So uh, it is dark from the time that you uh, went to find your new acro rat friends uh, and killed uh, your pursuers. Uh, you have spent maybe about an hour, so it's maybe about 11, 12-ish o'clock. Uh, if you ever checked uh, Penguin McCool's watch, uh, you might know. But uh, as you head on down <laughs> towards the end, it's about half a mile away. Uh, Y'all don't have to carry any torches, so you can uh, sneak or walk even uh, through the streets uh, very quickly. You don't really have uh, the need for light or to you know even be stopped by people who can't see because they need the light, so you can just kind of walk right on through. Uh, during this time, you kind of keep conversation light just wanted to get there uh, to start uh, your actual conversation once you find yourself a spot and up ahead you see a familiar sign uh, for your inn you see dangling uh, over the edge of a three-story wooden building a sign with a small red wagon hanging off of it very familiar to you the red wagon inn oh, cheer, huh? As <laughs> Ooh, ah. Ah. play theme song. The right. end. Now we need a theme song. Uh, as <laughs> uh, team, you and Jackie have stayed there before. For your knowledge, uh, I've explained this to you all, but for the knowledge of the rest who have not heard of what goes on in the world, uh, because I talked about this during Loreforge, but not here. So, the Red Wagon Inn 
is the home of the Adventurers Guild. It is essentially the only franchise in the entire Asterion. Uh, pretty much in any major city, and even most of the smaller ones, you can find a Red Wagon Inn. Because monsters are very prevalent in this world, adventurers are often needed. So being an adventurer is not necessarily a, whoa, they're how could why are they doing that ah, i don't want my son to grow up to be an adventurer like me right adventurers are a common profession uh, amongst a lot of people uh, and are essentially looked on like uh, mercenaries or guards would be uh, in some other worlds so the red wagon inn is a common sight uh, and if you are a traveler of any kind you've definitely seen one though you may not have stopped at one there's usually only one or two per city location but when you go to the Red Wagon Inn, you know that you are in the Adventurer's Guild. And so there's a few people hanging out outside uh, of the Red Wagon Inn. Being that you're in the desert, uh, normally the inn has stables. Uh, this one is no exception. However, most of the stables here uh, are lined with camels uh, as they are the pretty much sole riding beast uh, out in the Scorch. Uh, there are others, but they're the ones that can really carry an actual load that you want to go on, so most people just end up riding camels. Uh, there's a few benches outside the Red Wagon Inn as well, and a few patrons who have uh, been sitting outside, gathered around tables, telling tales and drinking drinks for the night. Uh, would you prefer to go inside the inn, sit outside into the cool night sky? What are you feeling? In hiding. In, in hiding. Okay. Zania, uh, we'll say that you take the lead then. Uh, as you go up to the door uh, and push it open the familiar ding ding sound of the bell uh, that flies uh, overhead as you open up the doors are made for any and all types of races being that it's an inn that caters to many adventurers so it's refreshing to not have to duck under the door for you and team for how tall that you are uh, as you open uh, into the inn you uh, see some familiar faces being that you've been in this uh, inn a few times before there is a uh, burly uh, older man in wearing what could only be described as a plaid lumberjack-esque outfit with a big old beard uh, sitting behind uh, the bar there uh, as bartenders do polishing up a glass uh, with a, a rag and cleaning it uh, passing out uh, oh. drinks as needed there are bar seats lined with patrons of any different race uh, there's actually uh, a couple different groups uh, of several of the other races in the actual tables within the tavern the floor in itself is beautiful cobblestone that has been uh, carved and chiseled. You can tell the franchise really makes sure that they keep things up to standard here at the Red Wagon Inn. Right next to the roaring giant fireplace, littered by heads of monsters that some of the best adventurers from usually local areas, so the best adventurers in the Scorch, have perched their heads up on the wall. Next to which is a stage for bards and performers alike to perform and earn some coin as well as uh, entertain the other adventurers out here to try and get them to spend their coin. There are maybe 30 or 40 uh, different tables in here, some ranging from uh, just two seaters to some of them uh, fitting up to 10. Uh, and there are many, many large parties of different races uh, as you come on in. As you're coming in, I would like everybody to roll me a perception check for me. It would uh, be a 12. 12. 9. 22. 22. What did Summer get? Summer's on mute. Summer is on mute. We can't hear, Bree. That seems uh, like that means that's a 19. Little... There. Oh, I was wrong. <laughs> she just didn't want to yeah, brag. I... Ever humble. I kept talking, but I'm, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. All right. So uh, those of you who got above a uh, 18, as you're walking in, this is a very crowded bar. It's 11 o'clock at night. It's drinking hour uh, as uh, you walk in. Um, there seems to be a uh, table uh, of four tiefling uh, off to the side, two females, two males, uh, all dressed in attire that is not of the Scorch. It is not the kind of uh, airy, breezy uh, cloth robes uh, that those in the Scorch wear for uh, protecting themselves from the heat. Uh, so you can tell they have not been here long uh, or else they would have already made themselves buy new clothes. They must be dying uh, in this specific heat here, especially tieflings, warm-blooded that they are. Um, they are just kind of stand out amongst the rest of the crowd uh, just because the other ones who are here that are adventurers all are kind of following uh, the right attire and wearing the proper get-up. 
But to be fair, Salt and Summer, you both kind of stand out amongst the crowd, too, with your circus outfits. So, you know, who's to judge uh, as you all enter the inn? What are we doing? Following the lady. Gonna find an open table. Uh, not good. close to the door. Trying to get far away. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. There is a uh, big open table right next to uh, the stage off to the side. It's kind of slunked uh, or slinked or whatever the proper term is back in next to a <laughs> wall. It's a pretty good spot. Uh, it's not great for table service, and that's probably why people aren't there in the first place uh, as uh, Zania kind of leads the group over there. It's a larger table, maybe fit for uh, eight people, so there is always a chance that uh, if the bar gets even more full, uh, you may have some company joining you at the table. Okay, I'm going to take cool. a seat and um, I'm going to let my wingspan cover both sides of me or whatever side people don't sit next to so no one can sit next to me. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> Reserved. <laughs> what are the rest of you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come and kind of sit next to our friend but kind of, kind of keep low. We're not exactly the most inconspicuous of people and I don't think they're... I think there are some people that wouldn't want to see us right now. <laughs> there are definitely some people who wouldn't want to see you right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to do my best at... Yeah. Do my best at, at looking like uh, I'm not there. <laughs> Taking uh, your top hat off, maybe? Mm-hmm. Actually, I will, so that um, a Penguin Von Cool can sit kind of on top of it or, or however he likes and get some nice deep breaths in and see the world. You sit down uh, on one of the stools to the side and you're small so it's not too hard to kind of slink uh, almost under the table uh, as you set your top hat out uh, as beside you. <laughs> Oi. Oh, yeah. oh, oh man. Oh, yeah. You're I was a little one. <clears throat> You've had words. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I have. <clears throat> So what are we eating tonight? As he, uh, you all, not having seen this penguin fellow before, team uh, in Zania, uh, he puts his flippers uh, up on the table uh, and begins looking around as if he has very much been a part of this group this entire time. Uh, I'm actually not at the table. Ah, team, where are you? I am up at the bar trying to get the attention of the bearded man. Sounds good. Salt, are you at the table? Just so that I can clarify and not be wrong again. I sure am. Sounds good. Uh, so we I'm will uh, pull out Penguin order cool some fish. up at the table. We'll come back to you uh, in just a second then, team, uh, as uh, we go to those uh, at the table. Penguin McCool comes out. So what are you all doing right now? <laughs> order some fish for Penguin McCool. Sorry, Jackie loves penguins. I like penguins, so just like, oh my god, penguin. But Zania would probably be like looking at the penguin, studying up and down. <laughs> <laughs> have any of us really I mean obviously we've seen this penguin before but how prevalent are penguins in your world <laughs> oh especially ones that talk not at all you may have the penguin that talks uh, cursed by okay. some witch who hated penguins like are these weird are these weird creatures or do penguins exist penguins exist up to the north uh, but down in the south in the desert penguins don't really exist down here so this will be a no. uh, surprise for anybody who happens to see penguin mccool we'll put his little hat on so he doesn't look as penguiny you uh I... oh does he have his <laughs> does he have his own hat has he got a top hat oh, inside of my hat? you pull a top hat out of the top hat and place it on penguin mccool <laughs> Uh, as he pulls out a little stick that looks like a cigar, he thinks he's smoking it. That's part of the curse and why his voice is so gravelly and awful. <laughs> Perfect. Just, just wait to see what he pulls out of his hat. He's like, hey, thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's a mouse. Oh, what sort of, what sort of fish you think they have out here in the desert? Uh, probably Wet not ones. a lot. Yeah. Mm. Hey, any's enough for me. And he, like... <laughs> he blows as if he's blowing a smoke ring. Zinnia, you're very confused. Nothing comes out of this small little twig. <laughs> oh, God, I'm loving it. Oh, Brittany, you should do a little puff of smoke with your illusion. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Minor illusions and some smoke rings. But I'm not quite paying attention when he starts doing it. And I go, oh, oh. He, he, he kind of looks at it and like flicks it like it's not lit up. And 
as flicking it lights the stick as you, as then you, like, uh, I, well, I'm cool. I got you. <laughs> uh, thank you, doll. As, oh, ah, gotcha. Hey, so who are you? As he kind of what is back that? and looks at Zania. What is that thing? Hey, uh, I'm a being. Who is you? Oh, sorry, that was rude of me. Uh, yeah. I'm... Uh, Zania is in t a little slightly intimidated by this little penguin, even though she's <laughs> a little big lioness. Uh, I, I'm a... Uh, Zania? Huh. And you are. Zania is a friend as well. Huh, alright. So, uh... We're, we're not gonna... We're not gonna have any slippery fins around here. All right, I'll, ju I'll just put back the coins I stole for. I'm your, I'm just kidding for the doll. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I didn't do Check your pockets. <laughs> you don't have any pockets anymore. They'd be taken. <laughs> just already the stolen. Pockets are Fast flippers. I forgot to describe her outfit. She wears a toga. A toga and then just her equipment. So I don't really think she has pockets anyways. But she at least very much fits in in the Scorch. Yes. Yes. Uh, her and team are definitely of the proper attire. Uh, you and your suits uh, and your uh, circus outfits uh, for the rat folk are not at all. But hey, it's the life of the traveler. Uh, during this time, we're going to go over to team uh, as you're trying to get a uh, hold of the barkeep. Uh, how are you trying to get his attention? There he is. Excuse me. He is. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Wait, hold on. Hold on. He's, uh, he kind of leans over the bar, uh, and you can hear him as uh, talking, as I was saying. I, uh, it, one single shot. Done. I, I, I used to be the best in the business. Now, if, you, if, you, uh, if you're you ever looking for archery lessons, you come to old Rod here. Uh, now, uh, sorry, what, were you looking for a drink? Well, yes, I was, but I heard you now speak of archery. <laughs> Yeah. You shoot the pew pews as well. The 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 pew pews? <laughs> no man. Mm -hmm. I, yes, the the pew pews. I shoot the arrows, uh, if that's what you mean. Uh well I used to. I got a got a bum leg now. Uh don't don't get out much anymore, but hey. I uh got to take part in this uh inn, so now I'm an official adventurer in the guild. Well know, I'm a bartender, but you know, I would I I I still have the bow. Uh, it, it, yes, I do do the archery. This is very fascinating. Uh, maybe one day you can uh, show me what you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm happy to show you uh, anytime. Um, but you, you don't strike me much as a bowman yourself. Not much muscle in those bones there, buddy. Yes, yes, this is very true. I am terrible archer. I need you to uh, teach me how to do things. Uh, do you think if I was to put Apple up on the rafter, you would be able to shoot? What, here? With all the with all these people in it? Yes, it's absolutely safe. Uh, as a few of the people he was talking up about his uh, immense archery skills uh, begin to say, like, Yeah, hey, Rod, why don't, you, why don't you shoot an apple off the rafters? And he's like, no, 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 no. There's too many people. Arrow could go wrong. I'm, I ain't... I'm not getting a visit from the council. Not happening. Okay. If you're not confident enough to do it, it is all right. Um, I, what I need is um, one, two, three, four. I need uh, four drinks, please. As you kind of hear some people around you, ooh, as you say the <laughs> not confident uh, line, he's like, it's not not confident, buddy. I'm just not stupid. What do you want to drink? Uh, just the uh, three of the sand ales, if you have them. Yeah, yeah, hold on. As he uh, pulls out uh, four uh, jugs. He, wait, you all human sized? Yeah. Yeah, okay, just making sure. Uh, <laughs> a lot of half Oh, yes, they yes, the yes I do forget about the, the smaller people, yes. yes. He, uh, four large, big jugs. Large, gotcha. Uh, he pulls out a big old jug of uh, this golden-looking ale. Uh, we'll call it sand brew. I like what you called it. Uh, as he uh, pours it up and fills up four of these large jugs. They don't have any kegs in the back, which is very typical of a uh, normal Adventurer's Guild that you've been to. However, uh, kegs, not a huge thing uh, out here uh, in 
uh, the scorch. The wood itself can rot, causes all sorts of bad flavor. So there's many large, like, silver uh, or uh, kind of uh, steel mugs uh, or jugs where they keep most of their things. Even the wine is pretty much kept in uh, vessels like this. Uh, no, yes, pottery. Uh, pottery is very important out in desert. It is indeed. As he lines up four sand brews, uh, that's going to be uh, four silver for you, friend. Which, by the way, uh, for all of you, because I don't think that we actually uh, classified that, uh, um, roll me 3d20. That's how much gold you start with. Oh, snap. 3d20 for every person I stole from, right? <laughs> for every person. So 100d20. <laughs> 99, because it's in groups of three. We have 38. Do we add the... Do we, do we add the gold that we got in today? Sure, why not? For sure. I'll be super, super nice guy. Which super I mean, nice. is like five or eight gold, depending on what you grab, so, you know. Yeah. Um, but yes, so you've got your gold to start with. Uh, he charges you four silver for the four uh, sand brews. I got a natural 20 on one of those. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Ooh. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> That's 80 gold right there. Right there. <laughs> I got a 14, a 16, and a 20, so it, it's almost 80. <laughs> oh, dang. Wow. So he's back yeah. in it. Someone's rolling in it. I'll check out her pouch. Rolling in it. Got it. <laughs> I let Zinnia hold most of my coin because it always falls out. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're just used to throwing it in your pocket, but you got nothing. <laughs> I'll go pick it up and bring it over to her. Love it. Um, I'm going to grab all four of these after I hand over um, just one gold coin. Oh. And say, uh, when, uh, when your confidence is the reason, you come find me. Yes. I'm going to grab them <laughs> and I'm going to head off. He, he looks at the gold very confused at your egging him on, but also paying him a lot as. Uh, he, thanks. There'll be more drinks to be had. Don't worry. Uh, all right. All right. All right. I thought you were being generous. Uh, <laughs> nope. You, you head back on over to the table uh, and drop your sand brews. Those of you uh, who are at the table, uh, that's right about when uh, McCool is like, hey, you know, so what are we doing here? Uh, and that's when team drops four sand brews. Noticeably, uh, McCool did not get a sand brew. Oh, I'm very sorry. I did not realize there was another member of the party. I counted. I said one. I said two. I said three and four. But alas, here is four here and me, so this is five. Hey, <laughs> it's not a problem. I'm sure Summer wouldn't mind sharing since she keeps me cooped up in that hat all the time. Eh? Look, Penguin, go for it. Oh, yes. Uh, as With his two little flippers, he <laughs> like grabs... Oh, God, water went everywhere. <laughs> oh, no. Got it. I, I had the lid on all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Nat, oh, one. Nat one for trying to be that stupid like funny with flippers. <laughs> right then. Oh, beautiful. Um, so he spills the sand brew <laughs> over. A little bit of it falls out uh, before he starts glugging it back. And, uh, and he just kind of leans back uh, and starts fiddling <laughs> with the, uh, the handle on the beer, leaving y'all to uh, discuss. What is that thing? I don't think I ever got my question answered. Uh, it's a penguin. A what? It's a penguin. A McCool one. Yeah. You know, a mm. black and white penguin. Uh, with a hat. I'm going to look at team. In your hundred years, have you ever heard of a penguin? I, I'm sorry, a what? A, a penguin. Penguin, mate. Right uh, here. You know. Slip, slide uh, in the water. Penguin. Oh. It is very rare that I've actually seen the water, so no. Look, to be uh, fair... I don't know if you could tell, uh, but when you are in desert, uh, there mm. is not a lot of water. Well, this is a bit of an unusual penguin in that he... I'm not really sure... Uh, He's a sand McCall, penguin. McCall, do, you, do, you, do you know how you came to be? Usually they don't talk or smoke yeah. quite as heavily as this one, but... He's special. Yeah, usually they yeah, either smoke or talk, but they do both. Mm. You got it right. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I don't know. We found him in the circus. 
The uh, Still closer at, at McCool, just like. <laughs> He's like, hey, I charge for I looks, think, you know. I think it's the 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 hands, the hands, the flippers that don't make sense to her. She's just like, what? <laughs> oh yeah, he would be holding the cigarette like this, not. Like, yeah. <laughs> don't make sense, you know. Where are your knees? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need knees like these. What do you need knees for? A waddle? He's also, he's also a very small penguin. Oh, yeah. He's like <laughs> he's a rat tall. Yeah. So cute. <laughs> oh, my God. He hides his knees, Cat says. Look, you just don't need knees. You just waddle. That's why you get places. And sometimes you swim, you know, you, you just do. Waddle. What what's the time you travel by hat? Oh, everybody always asks what the waddle is. And he pretends to like put his stick out, but it just it sounds like a stick rubbing against the wooden table there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as he <laughs> hops off the stool and This is a waddle. You happy with the waddle? <laughs> this is what a waddle is. As he is he, he walks back like... over to the stool, he's like, Salt, help me out here. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I help, love help him. Me. Pull me up. I love you. Salt sets him up there. Back on the hat. See, so pulls the. Uh, <laughs> that's what a waddle is. Many waddle away. Drinking like I don't get waddle, it. Waddle waddle. <laughs> Till the very next day. Bum, 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 <laughs> Can we move on from um, what I is? What is you? Well, yeah. Look, I I think maybe should we talk about how we're gonna get out of this place? Uh, cause. Salt and I aren't very welcome. I think Oasis is at its time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, were you guys coming to talk to us or something? I uh, like we kind of not really sure what's happening. Um, team's gonna pick up his mug and start drinking it. Tell me, does it behave like it, Pirates of the Caribbean? Oh, it's. <laughs> Uh, definitely Pirates of the Caribbean or like that scene in Casper where the three uncles are drinking and eating and it just all goes to the floor. <laughs> Spills all Falling out. through. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, yes, we were actually coming to find you. I, uh, we hid questions for you. Can I make a quick Hello. deception check? Absolutely, you can. Can I see if I can figure out that what he's drinking is not being affected by him at all, and it's actually still good ale. <laughs> yeah, why not? Uh, roll an investigation, not a perception. I can do investigation. That's not a good investigation. That's <laughs> an eight. Eight. Maybe <laughs> that's just how unwilling work. Maybe they don't actually need to like have it touch it. You don't know. They're all magic. What are they? <laughs> well, you know what? I will. Um, I'll grab a mug with my tail and just stick it on the bottom and just let it refill. Yeah. <laughs> the sloshy noises turn to a weird pouring noise. Slide it right on under his... It it sounds like team is urinating under the table basically. As, yeah. as you're a free it beer, the drink. free beer. Hey, absolutely. At least it is where we come from. <laughs> as summer has no drink. <laughs> Sorry, summer. I'm going, I'm, I'm going brewing for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we were actually um, and team's gonna look around and see if anybody's there that's like actively watching them which I assume probably is the thing yeah you can roll a perception with how obnoxious we're being <laughs> well it's 11pm right so it's like drinking time already no it's still? absolutely drinking hour that's a 6 that's a 6 there's just too nice many people making too break. much noise. Uh, at about the time you start looking around, a uh, a bard has gotten up uh, on the uh, stage there and has begun playing a little ditty. Not particularly well, but it's better than the no uh, music that was going on in the atmosphere. And so uh, it's really kind of hard as everybody's attentions have turned that way. Hmm. We, uh, we have... Um, we have question for you uh we noticed um you were very skilled in the and uh, yes uh xenia 
<laughs> Can you help me with the words? I think he means your acrobatic skills and your. Yes. There you go. Stop yes. with a coin between my fingers. Ooh. Well, uh, lucky for the two of you, we've actually become um, quite available. So if you are in need of. Well, of course. If you are in need of, of some assistance, as my brother said, for a price, I'm sure there's something that we could arrange. Um, could we offer you protection and uh, make sure you do not die uh, with the help of uh, the Rajul Adin? Look, mate, well, I, I appreciate it, but uh, as you can tell, uh, the other people died, not us. But we could help protect you. Perhaps, I think you should uh, look into what we have to say first. <laughs> okay, alright, alright, alright. Have a drink. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. Um, so, uh, and Team's gonna hold out his hand and use precipitation to um, create the illusory image of that spear. Um, and he says, this spear here, that uh, big red lizard man he had, um, I need it. Zania, you recognize the spear as well, uh, and the shape is intricate to you. Can you roll me a religion check, Zania? Ooh. Oh, I rolled a four, and I have a negative one, so that's a three. <laughs> the cleric has a negative one to religion checks. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yep. Beautiful. <laughs> that is a good-looking spear is what that is. Beautiful spear. Beautiful Dang spear. It. Uh, we may not have parted on the best terms with the circus, so I, I, I think we're probably going to have to uh, have a pretty appealing deal to want to go back there. Well, it looks like it's worth a bit of coin. I You're have wrong, Sol. 35 gold I can offer, but this is, this is all I have. And you also have wealth of knowledge. Do you have plans for where you're going to head after you have this spear? Are you hanging around here? Are you thinking of maybe taking off for a bit? For perspective. Just so we can get for summer I think this is a better uh, idea for uh, Zinia to answer. She, she's brains of group. Quickly, I mean, for I perspective, say... for uh, Summer and Salt, 35 gold is about two months' worth of your work. Five coins from this, you usually perform like two or three shows a night, then you have to travel to like a whole other giant city. So that's not an unreasonable sum for you to at least perk your eyes up at. We're playing at Penguin Cool at the moment. Gotcha. Just make a joke. Penguin. Right, sorry, uh, didn't mean to interrupt come you. Cucumber. Ah, cucumber. I I get that now. <laughs> uh, uh, oh shoot! Yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm so um, smart. I knew. Um, I mean, big brain. We came. To, I came to the scorch, <laughs> feeling like there was something compelling me here, and I met team, and that kind of kind of felt like something was missing still, and then seeing that spear. I think was the final piece, and once we get that spear, I think we'll be out of here. Do you think there's going to be other fancy stuff around the spear? No, without a doubt. Oh, I'm keen. He is gladiator champion. He must have fancy things. You could probably find fancy cups, fancy pottery, fancy paintings, fancy mm. shoes. How about sweeten the pot? We get to raid whatever else we find, and and maybe maybe we travel together out of the scorch. Because I mean, it, ugh, now that we don't have the safety of the circus, it, it's it's not an easy it's not an easy place to leave. And we'll do the so, dirty work. We'll fit into the small holes yeah. that you can't fit into. And this is very fair. Yes, even possibly fancy people. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, Done deal. Why not? 
And not only that, after we get spear, it is easy to leave Scorch, uh, not so easy to go to Scorch. So it's easier to leave than stay. Well, it sounds like we've got a deal. You cover the drinks, and we'll... Do we want to set off in the morning, or do you want this to be a kind of sting overnight mission? Get done quick. Mm. Well... Uh, I don't. I do not speak for Zinnia, uh, but I would say uh, nighttime would probably be, be best. Uh, I assume uh, I have not come across your race before, but I assume you can see well in the dark. We we have many talents here. Yeah. <laughs> this is good. Let's drink. And then let's uh, do some investigating, shall oh, we? Oh, you're going to put me back in the hat this soon? Ah, uh, Von Cool, chill out. It's all right. Give me that chill plate. In there. Uh, as he slams the stick down. Whatever, you always do this. <laughs> <laughs> There's perks to being in the hat. You got a good life in there. Yeah, keep putting the <laughs> ice in and we'll call it good. Uh, as he takes your hat off the table and sets it on the ground and does like with his little flipper over to use an and he jumps right in. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, him. <laughs> right. I uh, can I can I like do they have waitresses or anything or do we have to go up to the bar to Oh, no. They might have, but like I said, y'all kind of tried to pick an out-of-the-way place, so you probably have to go up there to get some food. If I might make suggestion, if you're going up there, uh, try to go the man with the beard into mm -hmm. archery contest. I, got I this feel is... like he is not good at it. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. Alright. You're on it, Salt. We just need to get some fish for this penguin, or he's going to be really... He's going to be a pain to deal with. Four drinks and a fish. Sounds right to me. Salt, so you uh, hop off the stool uh, and w walk on up to the uh, bar front there. It is a tall bar front, so you have, uh, being that you're at both, you have to kind of jump up on I the stool. I will somersault up. Yeah. Oh, somersault up. Uh, being that you're an acrobat, <laughs> uh -huh. me an acrobatics. Hey. An acrobat. Of course. Acrobatics. See if you can do it with it a flourish. Is. Acrobatics. Acrobatics at 19. 19, as uh, you're walking over there, rat folk are not exactly super common, so uh, people kind of turn to look at you as you're coming up, as you size up the stool before kind of rolling up onto the stool as uh, the Goliath woman sitting next to you is like, hmm, <laughs> all right, all right, little one, okay. And she kind of uh, pats you on the back and uh, knocks on the table, a drink from a friend here. And uh, gives you one free drink for your acro rat roll. Amazing. I will still order four more drinks. Oh, hey, mate, uh, we need four. Uh, some grog would be good. Uh, you know, I heard that you're quite good at shooting. Uh, do you want to check out uh, how good you are? I heard that you could hit the side of a barn if you were lucky. Everyone at the table kind of... Ooh, and they kind of start doing the old like slam on the table type thing, trying to goad him into it even further. It's very grade school, uh, as everybody around there has been drinking for quite some time. As he's like, I, 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 I'll get you your drinks, but I'm I'm busy here. I, if, if I left, who would who who would man the inn? That I, I can't do that right now. So it's just not gonna happen. You forgot the fish as well. Oh, and the fish. Yeah, sorry. See, I'm already so busy. I can't even think of. I couldn't possibly. I guess step you're away. just not good at archery either. Oh, as everybody all around kind of uh, goes them on <laughs> even further. Roll a uh, persuasion. Three dice. Oh yeah. Persuasion <laughs> comes in at plus two. That's eighteen. Eighteen solid. Ooh. Let's see here. On the pretty fortune favors. <laughs> Everyone kind of, ooh. He, uh, he kind of. <laughs> uh, I'll make it easy on you. And I, uh, is there an apple or something we can grab off the bench? Oh, sure. There's somebody who's just taken a bite out of one watching. I'm just going to literally <laughs> grab, the, grab the apple with the tail, grab one of my one of my daggers, 
stick it into the apple, just fling it onto the roof. Ching. As he's like, whoa, hey, that. Uh, as everyone's like, yeah, all right, let's do it. You're you're pushing it on. Hit even the further. apple. Hit the, the apple. Hit the apple. Team, you hear uh, on the side, hit the apple, and you're starting to like, all right, he did it. And uh, so uh, <laughs> the tables around you begin joining in too. Hit the apple. Hit the apple. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to do my best to take out my short bow um, unnoticeably um, and kind of keep it under the table, but have it notched and ready to go. Okay, sounds good. If you keep it under the table, it won't make you roll a stealth for that or anything. Everybody's pretty enamored currently uh, as uh, he's like, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I don't even... I don't even have a bow, as somebody at the uh, table says, no, take mine. <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, as, uh, he pulls out uh, a, a very nice looking U bow uh, as Rod kind of stares at it. He's, uh, he, he looks over at you. All right. I'll hit the apple as everyone. Yeah. yeah. Cheers for it. <laughs> He's like, now if I hit the apple, around on you for everybody as everybody kind of ah cheers to that one he's trying to like send it back your way i sure why not right there then i i I quickly eye the um goliath's patch next to me uh i i am actively watching uh him draw back the bow and under the table i am drawing back the bow as well uh my plan is to knock his arrow out of the air Zania, roll me a hey, I, uh, perception my back check fire. real quick. Perception? Yeah. I'm hoping. Nineteen. Nineteen. You, you've seen Team shoot before. He's a good shot. He's got the right form. Quite literally, he's like a diagram. There's no muscle. It's basically a stick figure showing here's the proper way to shoot a bow. <laughs> Rod ain't exactly in the proper way right now uh, as he pulls back a uh, the longbow. You can see him kind of struggle to pull it back uh, as he aims up to the sky and lets it go. Team, you instinctually uh, try and shoot his arrow right out of the sky. It is a small right. target moving very, very fast. Roll me a hit with your attack. <laughs> No, no. Did you? Did you? Uh, it's oh, a natural oh. 20. Nat 20. <laughs> wow. The wow. dice work oh. when it matters. That's oh, what you get wow. with our dice. <laughs> Just. They know when it counts. They Just know. well done, dice gods. Well done. The build up, the delivery. Thank you, dice gods. As you, he pulls back his bow, shaking his hand, barely able to get it, and he releases not three inches before it was going to go into the apple. Maybe. Uh, As your arrow, (laughs) think, flies and pins his arrow right to the wall, splitting it in half right along the length of the arrow, literally snapping it uh, in two in the air. As suddenly the bard stops playing, there's a hush over the crowd. Everyone stops. And then I yell, round on the house! (laughs) Ah, As everyone starts cheering and they look back, many people have turned to look uh, at who shot the arrow as team stands one foot. I've already got my bow back under the table. (laughs) Oh, do you? Are you hiding it? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay, roll a stealth to see if you can hide who shot it. (laughs) No fucking way. (laughs) Another that 20. Is another it another net 20? Oh. oh my god. Oh, dude. 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 What? Legendary. It's happening. Legendary. Wait for it. Legendary. <laughs> Wait for it. Legendary. As soon as the arrow flies, a patented uh, archer's <laughs> technique from where you're from, the bow, much like those competition archeries, literally, boom, begins to move down before the arrow is even fully off of the end of the wood as you sit it back under the table and begin sipping your drink uh, as the arrow flies and it splits as everyone kind of looks around. That's when you you do the 
round for everybody! As uh, Rudd immediately is like, hey, who, who shot that? It was totally gonna... But the, the crowd is overwhelming. <laughs> Absolutely, there is no way Rod is gonna be able to talk his way out of this one. A round for everybody is given out. He tries the best that he might. He knows this is coming out of his cut of the pay. He is upset. He looks over at you, Salt, and he's like, You, you saw Hi. it was going to hit. I'm a little salty. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oof, oof, big oof. <laughs> now, I'm not going to. However, I should let you know about a little homebrew rule that a friend of mine started one time that I am in love with for exactly things like, I am a little salty. It's called a GFY mm -hmm. point. It's the exact opposite of a uh, inspiration dice. Uh, and I get to choose when you have to get disadvantage. Absolutely not going to do it, but I love the GFY rule. Is this <laughs> a warning? Fantastic. Because I think that's amazing. I would love to play with that. We need consequences, Brian. Do you want the GFY rule? I mean, I think it would be pretty great. I mean, I'm, I'm going to live in GFY land with all my puns. <laughs> I'll only keep it at one. We'll cap it just like a, a inspiration point. But if you do something that is like intentionally like, like this point, it's just a pun. It's whatever. But if you're like, I'm intentionally effing with the DM, I'm going to give you a GFY point. We'll let it happen because I always let what the players want happen. But I will give you a GFY point for it. I'm into About it. it. You won't take a GFY yeah, this time, GFY but it is a points. rule going forward. Yeah, we need we need a um GFY a who gets the yeah GFY counter because my money's on Alex. <laughs> I have Alex down right now as one inspiration, uh, no GFY yet, uh, but one inspiration. Kind of warning. <laughs> That, that's the mark and of I take the, uh... a good player. It gets many inspirations and many GFYs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's being added to the kill counter spreadsheet. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you, Amazing. Colt. Or, or Aurora Anima. You rock. Mm. So I bring back four <laughs> drinks and a fish. You, br you bring back four drinks and a fish, and everyone else clambers up to the bar. Uh, grabbing uh, mm -hmm. all of their drinks. Th their pitchers are going to be emptied tonight uh, <laughs> as everyone uh, goes so up. The bard who's... sits there sulking. Who's paying for these drinks? Oh, you know. Made it happen. Whoever? <laughs> all right. Seems like Rod had to shell out uh, being that he bet him that he would hit the apple. Mm-hmm. Right then, you all have your drinks and, and the fish on the table. To Tim as well, to Tim for it, uh, it appears we have a pretty nice distraction. If you needed somewhere to sleep tonight, uh, I'm sure Zinnia would not mind sharing her room. I uh, prefer to we, sleep on the roof. Are we gonna? Do you wanna? Do you wanna tackle this this evening, or should we? Should we get this uh, spear tomorrow? It is up for you. Um, how, how how does uh, how, how does everyone feel about this uh, idea? We don't even have an idea really uh, of where to find it. Or yeah, it's a great thing tomorrow. I think we should have plan. That might be good. Maybe we could do a little uh, a reconnaissance. Well, you show us where where and what needs grabbing, and we can get about grabbing it. We have that. We can. Zania and team, you've been in the Scorch for quite a time. You've fought in the Gladiator Rings. You know at least the part of town that Kinak lives in, uh, but you've never been there. It's obviously where uh, the rich merchants <clears throat> uh, and those with money live, uh, and you are neither. No, with that being said, we could uh, absolutely go take a gander tonight. Do a little midnight sleuthing. You're paying. Sounds great. As uh, Salt 
throws the rest of the drink back with his European uh, and stands up uh, and gets ready to uh, head on out, leading the way. I'm going to stand up in the that. Went uh, into the hat. <laughs> it looked very weird to any looking on as you drop a trout <laughs> into the hat. And then straight back on my head. Yep. And as everyone's and like, as I stand up. <laughs> is that something rat folk do? Is it good for their hair? As you take your hat off to brush Later it, the on, trout is gone. Comes the people, bones. Huh. <laughs> as I uh, as I go to stand up, the mug that's been filling up in my cavity <laughs> pours out on the floor. <laughs> as uh, it was it was perfectly fine while you know maneuvering a bow and arrow. Of course. <laughs> Back under a table, but as soon as I go to stand up, it just <laughs> falls out. As Tim, this is not the first time somebody's pulled this prank on you, but you're not sure who did it. <laughs> Sounds about right. All right then. So where are we headed? As y'all stand up and begin walking out of the bar, give me one more perception check from everybody. Uh, that's a twelve for me. That's a natural one for me. 12 and 1. 13. 17. 17. Uh, the nat one, you are a small fella, uh, and you've had two pints. Uh, and so uh, it is affecting your desire to be in a crowd, though not your ability to do things. Uh, Zania, uh, as you're walking out, uh, you recognize that that group of four tieflings that you saw before uh, is no longer here in, in the inn, which makes sense. You're one of the ones you saw in the first place. Um, you just kind of pocket that as a mental note you didn't see them go up stairs into any of the rooms uh, so maybe they were just stopping in for a drink you said they were wearing ropes or clothes that weren't um, accustomed to scorch Correct. temperature they were much more like wool and hot type clothing uh, or like, uh, not clothing for the heat clothing that keeps you warm uh, and so not exactly a great choice for the scorch got it Awesome. Mm -hmm. Right, the four of you head on outside the inn. Uh, a few more uh, people have parked their way uh, into the inn, uh, and pretty much as soon as you get up, uh, somebody comes and claims your table. The inn is getting full and very, very crowded. Uh, drinking hour is at its absolute peak at this point. You all head out, uh, and you can see, uh, again, it is very much a uh, street made with uh, many many wooden and sandstone uh, houses. It is very Gerudo uh, from Breath of the Wild specifically kind of style. Um, the water that is here all comes from the same uh, clear spring uh, and it flows through the canal or through canals that go out uh, from one place to another uh, leading to wells that spring up uh, within the city. Um, it is a crime punishable by death to pour trash or waste material into this water. Water is almost more valuable than gold in the Scorch. Uh, and so as you're here, you make an effort to anytime you see one of those, they're, they always build in small bridges for carts and other things to uh, walk your way through, uh, but you always make sure not to ever drop anything in there. Uh, that is a big, big no-no uh, in this town. So, Team and Xenia, or Xenia, sorry, I'm gonna say it wrong the first two sessions and then I'll have it right no. for forever. No worries. Um, you know that uh, the richest district is obviously those who live closest to the water. And as such, being near the Clear Springs, that's probably your best bet for where Keenak lives. Uh, but other than that, you don't have a uh, super clear idea where he may be. You've heard tell that he wanders here and fro. Uh, and honestly, he doesn't seem like a guy who would kind of... Uh, <laughs> sit down anywhere for too long in the first place uh, and so uh, you might have to do some searching for him y'all are currently on the uh, west side earlier i said east when i meant to the left i totally meant west i'm just east and west mess me up <laughs> so uh, <laughs> i don't know why no, i hate it when people get left and right on the other east yeah the other the australian east west. Is what i was talking about exactly <laughs> down under east the, the west mm -hmm. Uh, as uh, So you would know them to be uh, to the east from where y'all are at. Uh, to get to the uh, actual spring itself, uh, which spring is kind of an understatement. Uh, it is a huge, multi, 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 like uh, 20 mile in length, 10 mile uh, in width lake. Um, giant. Um, but should it ever run out, that kind of spells doom for everybody in Oasis. 
Uh, it is about half a mile to the east of where you currently are. Lead the way, guys. All right. Start going. Heading uh, on out. Team. Team, do we need to grab anything from the rooms to prep or uh, just head out? Do you think we should do Operation Servant? I don't think you told me about that one. What's that one entail? <laughs> oh, sorry. That was with Lice Crew. I was with. Uh, Operation Servant. Uh, we we are going to Rich Place. We we uh, be, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, imposters. Uh, and we be servants. Uh, Rich I... people... I don't like to beat my own drum, but I do happen to be very talented with a disguise kit. Well, you are the perfect person we need. If, Before if, your eyes, she will stop being a rat. Well, or just a different rat. <laughs> <laughs> Where did this Goliath appear from? <laughs> I, I, I myself can can make myself look you know not like a rat maybe like a halfling um but in terms of yeah we are very we are gonna be very hard people to disguise aren't we we're very <laughs> we're, we're quite the best furry and then... the shadow of summer mm. this is uh yeah. the, the furry group no doubt <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could probably make you look like a different unwilling that's not you, but you'd still be unwilling. I, on the other hand, can make myself look like a, you know, like one of those small people, you know, those small, like, human, like, like a halfling, you know? I mean, personally, I think uh, me and uh, Zinnia fit in quite well into at least the aesthetic of uh, Z this area, um, but we might have to make you fit in a little bit more with the days there. Right. Uh, oh, good. I can fit in well with your cloak. Okay. Okay. There well, we well how, about I just, how about I just change my appearance, and then, and then the rest of us should be able to should be able to blend in, right? I pull out a blanket. Put it in front of Summer and go. Oh, I am very intrigued. <laughs> and then I cast. I disguise self. What do you come out um, as? Uh, I'd like to look like a, a halfling girl, I guess. Um, so I, I I make myself slightly taller, um, and my tail isn't quite visible anymore. But if people look really closely, they'll know something's not right. Hold on, just out of curiosity. Now, <laughs> when I think of a not quite visible tail versus no yeah. tail at all. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. I, it says that I can re I have to have pretty much the same um, like limbs and stuff. So I'm guessing that I'm just going to try and tuck my tail away. We'll say what you can do uh, as uh, would be a... Uh, pretty common occurrence uh, is you wrap your tail around you and your illusion gives it the appearance of a belt there we go beautiful but That's if right. someone looks looks at me really closely and wants to why is that belt out... wiggling around <laughs> that belt gonna attack me in a second <laughs> it seems like when I tickle her her belt wiggles I don't understand <laughs> stop tickling me <laughs> every time she's happy her belt starts wiggling <laughs> um yeah so I, I will I'll do that and make myself look like a girl. I think still like still the same kind of um, colorings, so still quite pale and um, with those with that white blonde hair, but more of a skin tone um, color. Than well, this is quite impressive. Yeah. As uh, based on the description, uh, Salt uh, pats on the blanket and then moves his hand away, and a small uh, albino halfling uh, walks out from the other <laughs> side uh, with uh, the same color eyes, uh, not uh, the uh, red kind of albino eyes, uh, as she walks out and gives a little flourish uh, as she is ever still the show woman. And she's What's wearing maybe like a red and black dress now. 
Sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll reply to the team saying that's impressive, and I'll go, what's more impressive is your belt pouch. And hand it back to him. <laughs> oh, well, look at this. This is why we choose you. We have many talents. Summer, you are essentially uh, dressed up in the uh, Link Gerudo outfit for the uh, Vi from Breath of the Wild, <laughs> but actually appropriately uh, on a small little hapling uh, girl now. Um, as <laughs> Salt, you are the only odd one out of the group. How are you letting in? I will be hiding as much as possible and fading into the shadows. Sounds good. Right, he you're... lives in the shadows. <laughs> rat man. Uh, as the four of you... I am the rat. <laughs> I am the rat. Uh, as, as the four of you... Uh, move on uh, and begin heading towards the eastern part of town. You take this time to uh, converse a little bit and get to know each other, uh, a- a- at least for the sense that um, that you need to for this kind of mission that you're currently on. Uh, knowing like, okay, uh, you're so it seems you're pretty good with a bow and team like, uh, yeah, I do the pew pew. Uh, <laughs> as Zania with her spear, uh, it is very obvious uh, that she would be the frightening one should you ever have to go one-on-one with anybody. Uh, you would not want to uh, mess with the lioness uh, <laughs> as a uh, team so uh, puts it in a dead language. Um, <laughs> and they uh, at least have a good familiarity with what summer and salt do purely because that's why they were going to look for you in the first place uh and so through time uh, about 10 minutes of walking you're not trying to uh look too conspicuous as you're doing this you definitely don't want to uh call attention to yourself uh let me change the music here from the in music back to the out in the middle of the night with torches around kind of music setting the scene there's a few clouds in the sky the stars are gorgeously bright when there's no light from any sort of uh, major torchlight around here as at night things die down pretty heavily uh, in the scorch the stars are absolutely beautiful so much so they make you feel a little bit smaller than you actually are uh, especially a uh, team uh, this is something you often think about whenever you uh, gaze up at the stars at night and your new purpose uh, in life and uh, Zania uh, those Stars are nice, however, uh, you are studying uh, the clouds and seeing how those may be useful to you at any point uh, during this espionage mission. Time passes uh, as you walk that way. You spot a few people. Nobody really uh, gives you too much of a glance. Uh, there's a uh, beggar uh, at one point uh, who kind of uh, looks at you quizzically, but probably more in the sense that why would somebody with wealth uh, like uh, Summer is now... Uh, demonstrating with her clothes, be walking this way, uh, and she must have some weird bodyguards, especially that rat folk fella. Uh, kind of, yeah, you know, you get it all in a look uh, as uh, y'all are heading that way. You can see the buildings slowly changing. There rarely are any more uh, wooden buildings. As you're getting further and further east, you're not only getting into uh, more sandstone buildings, <clears throat> more sandstone buildings uh, as you go, you're getting into multi-story uh, and possibly multi-family, though you wouldn't bet on it. You would bet that this just has more money uh, as you're going this way. Multi-story sandstone houses uh, with stairs leading onto the outside, some of which have their own little patio decks up at the top to stare at the stars, and some, even the richest of them as you're going, have direct connections to the canals that lead from Clear Springs next to Oasis. Uh, And so this display of opulence both uh, makes you, you know, envious uh, of the wealth, but also you do see opportunity here for those of you who uh, are of the sneakier uh, and stealing type. Uh, And you make a mental note that maybe you need to come back here more than just for uh, this large spear. How are the four of you going to locate Keenak? This is a very good question. We're going we go. to take... Oh, no, go ahead. I was going to say we're going to take the lead of, of our employers. Ah. Uh, Keenak, are you out there? <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> hey, yo, Keenak! Jane, Red Lizardman, <laughs> where are you? <laughs> I know you're here. I challenge you to a lull. Are there any guards out? Uh, there are. Uh, the, these guards uh, mimic um, very uh, 
Middle Eastern kind of uh, medieval uh, style. Uh, they have very much the kind of sashes uh, over the uh, leather body plates underneath, studded uh, and much uh, have the kind of scimitar look or uh, very long curved spears uh, on the end. Though you notice um, as you're getting further and further into the city, uh, on the outside of the city, there's a lot of uh, the kind of human uh, guards, typical um, people who are looking for uh, quick money, which is what guard work kind of is, uh, but aren't brave enough to really go on being adventurers, mostly humans, uh, a few dwarves, uh, and maybe uh, some goliaths out on the edge. But as you're getting further in, uh, they're, you're seeing kind of a shift uh, in the races of the guards. Uh, you're starting to see more uh, tieflings, some elves, and even a little bit more lizard folk uh, as you're coming in further. Uh, people who don't really have much of a problem with weather. Uh, as it were. So probably to ask uh, guards. Team and Zenia, if this guy had any sort of uniform or anything that would that you could easily point him at. Uh, the giant red lizard man. Uh, the one that uh, did the stabbing tonight. Yes, but is he naked or does he have certain colors or? You, uh... I'm going to be honest, I was not looking at his clothing, I was looking at the spear, but I assume <laughs> he has some sort of clothing. Do you know where we'd not... find him, other than just this general area? If I had any idea, I would assume there are nicer places towards the fighter's pit, I believe. Am I right, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, there are pseudo ludises uh, out here, not very big ones. Uh, as still, arena combat is not the thing uh, of Oasis. It's still monster slaying, uh, and so there are a few smaller uh, ludises where some of the rich folks would live. So it's worth a shot checking around there. Nice. Also, Jackie. Uh, so Zania, um, you weren't as enamored by the spear because that wasn't something that caught your eye until team showed you uh what were you predominantly focused on were you focused on watching Keenak and other gladiators uh fight or were you more focused on uh the kind of suffering uh, of some of the creatures uh that were being fought against excuse me i think um Zinia would probably feel for the um torture the suffering of the creatures and then looking at the fighting style of the people giving the pain. Um, Gaia. Remembering, probably taking note of who's doing the brutal stuff. Gaia. Um, then we won't say that you have any great recollection of Keenex attire. Uh, you're more focused on the others. However, you do learn a bit about his fighting style. Uh, and when you're talking about brutal, Keenex falls into it, but it's also in a weird way merciless or merciful because it's usually one strike and then it's done uh, and so mm -hmm. brutal in where he strikes but quick and painless uh, so you, you're not really sure what to call it but you don't have a good description of where he lives uh, you might have to ask around you might have to just go soul searching check on lizard folk tinder <gasps> okay um so no emblem uh <clears throat> That he might have on his like front door. <laughs> roll a roll a uh, general intelligence check to see what you remember. Okay. Ooh, nineteen. Nineteen, solid. Actually, yeah. Now that you're thinking about it, uh, you you're thinking about his fighting stance, uh, mostly trying to uh, maybe learn from him, as he's also a spear spear user. Um, but you do stop and think uh, about what he's wearing, uh, and you do recognize uh, a few more symbols. The spear that he had had that kind of rising sun point to where the rays of the sun met to the point of the spear. And you saw that symbol again uh, painted across his chest in white, uh, spreading out from the front uh, going around. So this kind of rising sun, uh, but white, uh, is seems to be a symbol that he's fond of. Okay, I. He seems to be fond of. <laughs> I relay the information to my team members. So we need to look for a rising sun. Give it about six hours. <laughs> this is hilarious. That is what I was going to say. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get up early around me, mate. 
so, someone's gonna um, investigate the doors and, and like any any sign that might indicate where somebody lives. And looking for that rising sun in particular. Sounds good. So just doing a general search of the area, trying to find a rising sun. And then mm -hmm. while she's doing that, I'm just going to try to see if anyone rich looking passes by. And then I'm going to like hunch my stance over so I'm not as intimidating and kind of just be like, and raise my voice a little bit so I'm not as scary. And I'll be like, um, hi, I, um, I got lost looking for my employer's house. Um, and I described lizard man and I, um, um, could you help me? I like that. So, um, let's, let's start with Zinnia and then we'll go to you, uh, Bree, as you're looking around. Um, so let's roll a, um, deception or investigation for you, Zinnia, uh, cause you could technically count this as an investigation style. So whichever you prefer. Let's do deception. That's a 12. 12. Let's see. Uh, it's a uh, younger uh, female uh, human uh, who you've happened to stop in the streets. Uh, she's carrying a, a basket of uh, various silks and textiles. Uh, she herself appears to be in very uh, fancy garb. Uh, she kind of looks around and seeing your compatriots, uh, the unwilling, uh, the rat folk, uh, and uh, the other small uh, halfling girl. Uh, she, I, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, forgive me. You, you sounded like you were describing Keenak. Uh, that you are here to guard Keenak. Oh no, no, not guard. Just help take care of his house. I forget exactly. Wait, you forget what you're there to do for him? I think it was to clean. Um, he just hired me for help. Help in general. Oh. She kind of, uh, she looks at the rest of you, uh, and she kind of whispers in, Ah, I understand, darling. Uh, help. Uh, well, uh, yes. Let's see if we uh, can... yes, the concubine. <laughs> just, just be careful with him. Uh, he has a temper, you know. Uh, I don't know if you've seen him fight. Uh, just w watch your tongue around him. I haven't had the uh, the goal to get into the, the fighting arena, so I'm not too sure. Well, you'll be serving with truly one of the best, uh, um, but I, uh, I, I don't envy your position. Uh, I, I don't know where he lives exactly, but you're, uh, you're not far off. Uh, if you head further north, uh, he, he lives uh, nearby. Um, his house is quite large. Uh, I, th I think he took over uh, the previous champion's house and just w waltzed right in. I've heard he's quite messy. And I guess that's what I'm there for. <laughs> well, <laughs> she uh, she kind of leans her head down uh, and uh, hugs you uh, and uh, leans back. And, yeah, uh, do be careful. Uh, I will. Thank you for the. Uh, guarding words. Absolutely. I'm... Yeah. As she uh, walks off uh, and carries her bag uh, off uh, further uh, in the same direction that she was going, heading south. Zinnia so oh, immediately feels bad, but it had to be done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, it works. Yeah. Right. Uh, as... Uh, Zania is in the middle of having this conversation. Uh, Bree, you were uh, about to uh, go looking at some houses, but you do overhear this. It is a quiet street right now. Do you still want to keep looking around here, or...? Um, no, I guess I, when I hear that, I'll start heading in the direction um, in the direction that they were indicating, and okay. keep my eye out that way for what we can find. Sounds good. Did you want me to roll investigation again, or take the one that I rolled? We may have you uh, do some investigation whenever you uh, roll uh, further. Uh, we'll just keep that roll for now, so just hold on to it. Sweet. I'm happy with that. <laughs> oh, must have been a good roll. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh, did uh, Gato come back in? Hey, he did. He won. Yeah. Oh, cool. Make sure we message him. Um, I have already. Awesome. You rock. <laughs> so you all begin heading in the general direction uh, that the young woman uh, pointed forward. 
uh, for. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, I was just gonna say I would like to. Um, what what kind of what kind of substrate is under us? Is it like sandy? Is it rocky? It used to be uh, sandy, being when you were in the kind of uh, less wealthy district. Uh, however, here uh, it is very much. Uh, sandstone bricks or just straight bricks underneath you um, near the uh, actual canals. The canals themselves are marble all the way through, keeping the water quite clean. Uh, however, uh, underneath mm-hmm. you is actual stone. Now, you can probably bet that the rest of the city is stone like that, but sandstorms come in so often, uh, it's not worth mm-hmm. sweeping off the poorer district, but they have people to sweep um, off the richer ones. I'm going to pull out just a little bit of sand that I'm sure I have tucked in one of the crevices of the bones somewhere and kind of draw out a little rising sun and uh, look to Ada and say, Ada, Ada Habib, Nazaratun. And I'm going to have him go fly and look for this symbol. Ooh, I like that. Heading off in the direction you were pointed, I'm assuming? Mm Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Roll me a perception for Atta. Uh, what stat block should we be using for your uh, jackal? That's wonder. a good question. Um, let's see. It, it's a flying familiar, correct? Yeah, so there's a flying cat creature. Oh, um, well then that's Jack, perfect. do you remember what it's called? A try, try something, try him. Trust try him. him. Yes. Trust him. Trust him. Or I got it, yes. Is that like on the equivalent of like a rat or a hawk and whatnot? It actually has its own stat block, I think. Ooh, might have to look that up sometime. For now, we'll call yeah, it. We'll worry about that later. For now, we'll just do flat rolls for okay. Anna, Works and then for we me. can figure it out later. Works for All me. All right, kaboom! Hey, wow, that's a 17. Solid, good roll, Thanks. especially had you had a bonus, it might have been redonk. Yeah. Uh, so 17, we'll call that really good. So, um... Uh, you all here, uh, team, speak some language that you're not familiar with. Even for uh, Summer and Salt, you've traveled across uh, Asterion, and you have not heard this language before. Uh, and so hearing him speak to this bone jackal uh, that comes out of his chest cavity, uh, uh, you're a little perplexed, but the jackal uh, flies off uh, forward into the night, flying uh, up high, looking for the symbol. Um, he's going uh, off for a little bit, uh, and he will return. Uh, if he finds anything. So y'all can keep walking for a bit um, before uh, seeing if Ada can find anything. Seems like we all have secret creatures stashed away somewhere. <laughs> this. Uh, as far as I know, a uh, little fun story while we walk. Uh, when I was uh, resurrected, uh, Ata was in the tomb with me. And I assume they uh, brought him back as well. Hmm. That's lucky. Well, is it lucky? It's probably a bit personal to ask you right now if you're happy about having been resurrected or not. Yeah, it is second life. They pulled me from the Duat, but, you know, I, I have no say in this, so I've been around for another 104 years. Why not? Oh. That's an awful long time. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's not. Thoroughly for the lifespan of the Leonin and the Rat Folk, uh, Team is the grandfather of the group. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm old and angry. Oh. I wish when Spiegel, people I'm... spoke my dead language. I'm <laughs> Why don't they speak? <laughs> 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 I love it. All right, I'm All right. done. <laughs> Should we press on? Y'all have been talking yes, as you've been walking forward. Uh, as you mean you we are... don't stop to talk? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> as y'all are walking, Salt, uh, you being kind of out of place here, uh, you see there's two guards headed your way, uh, two green lizard folks. Uh, carrying torches uh, and scimitars walking your way. You could either stay with your group or if you're wanting to hide, because you mentioned that Shade earlier. To black. Sounds good. Let's roll me a stealth roll. I think I need another pretty roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, oh, it's fine. It's going to be down. Um, oh, no. Uh, that's only a 10. Only a 10? Okay. Sorry. Sorry, right, Bray. 
You know what? It's all right. As we said, we're trying to get all the bad rolls out of the way on the giveaway dice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so uh, you quickly slump off to the side, uh, and the lizard folk do hear you run. Uh, you were not quick about it. You were kind of caught off guard uh, by them coming, and you bolt off to the side uh, as they all turn. But they see the three of you all, uh, and just kind of uh, you're in the proper clothing. Um, they actually one of the lizard folks uh, walks over uh, and uh, gets pretty close uh, to the three of you with his torch before kneeling down, assuming that uh, Summer uh, is the leader of you all based off of her elegant dress. Mm. He says, Miss, uh, you shouldn't be out this late, you know that. Uh, We are actually coming to see one of your gallant gladiators. I have a gift for him. A gift for who? Oh, Which gladiator? Uh, what's his name again? Stop you the know, the, the, the champion. Do you just say the champion? Okay. Wait, how do you know? It, 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 what do you have to bring to Kinek? Uh, as you can see, an assortment of gifts. I have with me this beautiful lioness woman who (laughs) is very talented in a multitude of areas she 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 can make sure that your champion is very comfortable uh i also have this ancient wonder yeah no my jaw is dropping like uh it's literally does the skeleton trope where it like drops and then (laughs) falls a little bit to the side I lift up his jaw as I say I have this ancient wonder have you heard of the unwilling they are very very interesting creatures I'm sure the champion would love to see both of them Hmm. roll a uh, persuasion I'm get will a hair clip help out to give her advantage. Or just oh, do you let the hair <laughs> down? Yes, yeah, so I was trying to. Oh, absolutely! You can help her. And like, okay. I love it. She <laughs> she drops her hair as all '80s movies would say. She was hot. Before <gasps> Nat twenty. Nat twenty. Yeah! Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. That was the first roll. Um, do you want me to? Do you want me to tell you how amazing that was? <clears throat> Uh, of course yeah, I it's really 25 25 25 20 uh, we do do uh, crits succeed and fails fail uh, when it comes mm-hmm. to checks mm-hmm. however if it's something impossible it may just put you to the next level so if you're like i want to jump the mountain in one bound i roll a 20 i do it i want to shoot like, an arrow out of the air <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> you roll two nat 20s okay maybe we'll figure out how to make it happen um, but it at least opens up more opportunities than you had previously. Uh, but mm-hmm. with a nat 20, uh, you point to a team whose jaw drops. They're amazing creatures as you pop the jaw back up into place. Uh, you're a halfling, so you kind of have to jump to do it. Uh, and then you uh, point over, or the lioness, as uh, Zania pulls her hair down uh, and uh, twirls it back. Uh, as uh, <coughs> the... Uh, the lizard folk stands up uh, very uncomfortably, like, oh, oh uh, those kinds of gifts. Right. Um, <laughs> oh, don't delay. Uh, he's not far. Uh, ten houses down, three to the right. You will see it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> he's just, like, very uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> Uh, as uh, he walks off and rejoins his other uh, lizard folk friend Uh, he walks by actually where Salt uh, is hiding Uh, and Salt you can hear him talk to his other friend uh, and he's like I don't understand why Kina gets all of them I don't it's it's crazy (laughs) (laughs) Uh, how close do they come to me uh, not too far like 15 feet or so uh, and you're like gotcha. essentially right. hiding behind a barrel, which is full cover for you at this point. Perfect. Uh, after they <laughs> walk off in the distance to where you'd no longer be illuminated by their flame, uh, Salt, you rejoin uh, your group. At about that time, uh, it just happened to roll really good on this check. Uh, Atta does come back uh, over uh, as well. And uh, Atta lands 
right on your shoulder, which kind of makes you uh, fall back just a little bit. Uh, but Atta kind of nuzzles up next to you. Uh, and to all of you, it looks like Atta's whispering to him, but the jaw of Atta doesn't move at all uh, because this is a telepathic connection, find familiar. Uh, but Atta essentially says, um, now, yes, give me an Atta voice. Now, do I do I need to do a voice for the fine familiar? Because previously in my last campaign, somebody they had a hawk familiar, and I had to do Mickey Mouse's voice through the whole time. So I think uh, honestly, we should let Chat decide. Oh, should Atta Ooh. have a uh, accent, and what accent should I have to try and pull off or impersonation? What? Please pick an easy one. What is his <laughs> Oh, Stronghearth, uh, in the chat. She's actually uh, one of my players. All hail Mickey. Uh, he was the key to them <laughs> defeating the ultimate evil before. Elmo New York Ozzy. Um, I'll get plenty of Ozzy when he does the rats, don't worry. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that one. Scotsman, that's going to be dwarf. Oh, Scottish! <laughs> oh my gosh, chat's going so fast. I can barely catch up. I saw... <laughs> mm-hmm. So I saw uh, Kermit the Frog and Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> Or I Arnold Schwarzenegger. I do like that <laughs> one. I like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, my lack of watching Sesame Street is really going to show, but let's go Kermit. <laughs> Kermit. Yeah. Uh, Kermit the Frog here. I, uh, <laughs> I went uh, searching. Uh, I went to uh, find... Uh, what is his name? Kinek? Uh, I, I uh, went forward and... Uh, I, I think I found that uh, rising something. Uh, that's uh, it's not too far off. Or it didn't take me very long. Nope. Um, do you need I, anything I else, Freddy? I thought you said no. Oh, what? <laughs> I thought you said you don't watch Sesame Street. That's I'll... so good. <laughs> oh, no, it's not Sesame Street. I've that's seen not... every nope. meme Muffins. from Kurt. Oh, hey, Miss Piggy. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> In the freaking vine where he's like, Shorty, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Muppets. This isn't oh. even Sesame Street. What am I doing? Yeah, Muppet, Revenator is cancelled. Kevin's on, on Sesame Street as well, right? Is he? No. no. This is Muppets, right? Yeah. No, Did he have a Muppet. cameo? Uh, maybe. Hey, Kermit's, Everyone's Kermit. been, on Kermit's been in everything. I'm, I'm yeah. like, chat, tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm like pretty sure Kermit is also on Sesame Street. Oh, Kermit had a cameo in Big Bird Storytime. Ah, then I was intentionally doing that. I knew. Boom. Uh, I, yeah. I knew the, uh, whole, the whole time. I, uh, <laughs> I would know. Miss this is the best Kermit. familiar ever. <laughs> so Kermit um, is I'm going to thank Atta. <laughs> hey, it's no problem. Don't worry about it. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as Atta uh, climbs back uh, into your chest cavity and pulls his wings uh, closed. <laughs> <laughs> this evil bone jackal with devil-like wings is like, hey, uh, I'm just gonna go uh, crawl back <laughs> up into the... Thanks for the, uh... Thanks for letting me out. I think you broke through. <laughs> I'm crying! <laughs> Please send us those clips. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Eat your heart out, critical role. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so you now think you know the location uh, of uh, Kinak's house, thanks to uh, both pimping out your lioness and the Kermit jackal. I, hey, I was pimping out our unwilling as well. <laughs> That's fair. I don't know what he's in. I don't know what this champion's into. That's true. I'm going to give him you options. <laughs> He may be looking to get bone. Never mind. I'm not gonna. Uh, oh, no. oh, sure. So uh, that means that you get a disadvantage, right? Yeah, I take the GFY. <laughs> if the group votes on it, I take the GFY. Jude. Chat can give me a GFY. <laughs> no, bad pun. Add it. Add it. Add it. Oh, going to the going to the spreadsheet. Right, Chat, tell me what GFY stands for. I thought it meant good for you, and I was oh, like, like n- an ironic good for you. Oh, no. like, oh my gosh, it good means for you. the go F or so. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I have to allow so much profanity. 
I didn't say it. I just said F. F could mean go have a fantastic time. Go wait, I got it. you. Frost. From GFY. So that way, right? Also, yes, let's head that way. And yes, Shusavas, we are streaming again. This will be a weekly stream. So hope you all are in for a lot of Kermit. <laughs> if you join Rai's stream on Mondays, you may end up in the story somehow as well. Oh, yeah. Works um, Mr. Mittens was uh, the first person to comment uh, and suggest uh, something, oh. and so uh, Mr. Mittens is the name of y'all's evil circus leader now. And right. Penguin McCool. And Penguin McCool, Penguin too. McCool. <laughs> right. You all had... All right. <laughs> Drew you all had no. right. right. We'll, we'll, we'll have the three of y'all walk while Atta uh, <laughs> and uh, team, you know, bond. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, so you all begin walking forward, uh, uh, continuing not far off from where you've heard the house to be. Um, ten houses up, three to the right. It's the exact same way that Atta came from and where he told you to go. Uh, and so you walk that way. It doesn't take but about a minute uh, before you turn to the right. Uh, and it is very obvious where Keenak lives. This house, not what you would picture a gladiator uh, or a fighter like him living in. He, uh, This is... Yeah. You would almost call it a shrine uh, to something that once was here or a long forgotten ruler. It is definitely older. However, it has steps walking up to it as if uh, like a king would live here. Uh, so that kind of throws you off. However, the stonework is maimed. It, it is scarred. It, it looks like somebody took pickaxes to it or Wolverine slashed it with his claws. Uh, it is completely marred all around the stonework here. The rising sun symbol uh, that Otto was looking for is actually there on the top of this. Uh, it's basically like a three-story walk-up, almost like a pyramid that leads to the house uh, at the top, which the house in itself is still quite large, maybe two stories tall there. Um, the rising sun is actually uh, painted on the steps uh, as uh, you're walking up. It did not used to be a part of this. This looks like this was hastily thrown and painted on there by someone. Um, you can hear uh, the sound uh, of metal scraping against metal coming from uh, inside uh, Keenak's house. And there are uh, raziers and flames uh, lighting up the inside of it. It is kind of open spaced, uh, which is odd for a champion or someone of prestige. Normally it's very closed off, like we don't want intruders in here uh, to hurt uh, or take anything. This is open concept uh and uh which yeah you just find odd mm. this is odd <laughs> <laughs> we have top notch role players here <laughs> it looks like he's uh, quite uh, sure of himself um is there i'm guessing there's some guards around um is there any walls i can climb that no one can see me climb roll a uh, perception all right Hey, hey, what's that? It's a 13 plus. Oh. Perception is two, no, one. So that's 14. 14. As far as you can really see, there doesn't appear to be any guards around. Um, the walls of this building, uh, there are definitely some that you could scale uh, towards the backside of it. It seems like uh, the front of it is very uh, open. Um, I hate to keep saying, like, uh, oh, Breath of the Wild is a good descriptor, but it, it, it just is. Uh, the palace in which the uh, princess there of the Gerudos lives, uh, where you can walk right up and it's open, uh, but the backside has, like, the room that leads to the top. That's a pretty decent descriptor uh, of it. So um, there is a back uh, side wall that you can see uh, that's lit up by the uh, torches around. You can't see inside there because it's you know, like three stories up uh, from the stairs. You'd have to really kind of get up there a little further if you wanted to see, um, but uh, you, there definitely is solid wall that you could climb. Uh, I'm going to grab... Are you, are you visible at the moment, Sol? Or are you hiding I'm somewhere? You. I'm next to you. Okay. Um, I'm just going to... I'm going to go, okay, you can do this. You've got your flips. You're going to be amazing. You are all over it. And I'm going to give him some bardic inspiration. Love it. 
Got it. So that is going to be um, the. You have it for ten minutes. Is that a D six um, or a D eight at D6. this level? D six at this Fantastic. point. Fantastic. Awesome. You, so uh, you can add a D six. <laughs> you were relatively confident, <laughs> um, but it is, you know, an unfamiliar <clears throat> city, so you're not really sure what you could see around. However, your sister's words always fill you with the confidence that you really need. Uh, and you're certain that you could do some wet work here if you needed to. Awesome. I look at the uh, at Zania and team and say, can you guys climb? <laughs> well, you can try. I'll give you a rope. I have, I have clothes. They don't do much good, though. Do you think, do you think we could try and just, like, go in the front door you could get in the hat with with von cool for a little bit and then pop out and scurry off while i um present the gifts to right, all night. total side note and possibly op do i have to breathe <laughs> you know never know until you try <laughs> Well, that, well, I was asking that question, oh. we'll just pop that up and let the penguin have a breath. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He just pops it up. <laughs> he knows he's going right back under. <laughs> if he's holding the hat upside down, he knows he's going under, so he just gets a quick breath. <gasps> As you put the hat right back on, <laughs> which is invisible to everybody else's eyes uh, right now because you're not wearing it as the halfling girl. Um, but... Uh, yeah. 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 You don't know until you try. Because you don't off. feel like you have to breathe right now. Okay. We, uh, I suppose. Uh, is there enough space for me and the penguin to climb inside your hat? Um. There. There is plenty of room in my hat. I, it's just. <laughs> it's just that it gets more difficult for you to breathe in there. The more of you I'm. Stowing away, no, we just, and you have to be able to—you have to be able to kind of. Can you disassemble your bones? Is that insensitive of me to ask? It's just that you know. I do not to, believe that is something I can do. You have to kind of be able to maneuver your way into the hat. I you know, once you're in there. Well, I mean, do you want to try and get in my yeah, hat? Yeah. We might as well try. I—I uh, I quickly <laughs> take to that around the corner, guys. Just not in the middle of everyone. Oh, no, yes. You're always Trying to climb an invisible head. Yes, good idea. <laughs> um, do I go, go around the corner, take my hat off, and see if, see if um, he can get inside, I guess. As y'all are standing there, ten bones, ten bones, ten it's about time ten bones. your boy gets a decent roll. As y'all are standing there in front uh, when Salt suggests, yeah, we should probably not stand out here in the middle of the street and discuss this plan. Uh, you see uh, a man uh, looks to be uh, dwarvish. Uh, it's hard to tell from uh, this height specifically uh, and the angle that you're at kind of uh, crawl his way out and over the uh, edge of the staircase coming from inside of uh, Kenak's house. Uh, so you can see him uh, as he starts kind of like slowly going down uh, the stone steps there. Those of you with dark vision, which is all of you, but I have to say it, uh, can see uh, that he appears to be bleeding uh, pretty profusely as he comes out. But you see the man that you're looking for, uh, Keenak, come walk over to the edge uh, of the stairs as the dwarf gets flipped over by a kick as he's like, I, I yield, I yield, uh, as he holds up two fingers. Uh, when Keenak <laughs> sticks the spear right in his chest cavity, uh, and <coughs> the dwarf <coughs> squeeches out uh, before Keenak takes the spear and, like a shovel, <laughs> flicks the dwarf off the steps as he rolls down the stairs coming your way uh, before Keenak turns and walks back in his house. The dwarf rolls <coughs> directly at your feet. <coughs> Can I start applauding him before he goes inside? So yeah, that he absolutely can, you can. He, he is... Our champion! What a wondrous display of your strength and courage! Kinek stops uh, and takes a look at you. Yes. It is. 
What do you want? What are you here for? I am here to admire you, champion. Uh, we bring with us our offerings to you. Oh my god. May Salt, where are you currently be... during this? Not to interrupt oh, you, If I can be, I'd like to be out of sight. Okay, but you can I roll a be, uh, stealth check on that. behind Drew. Okay, cool. If you want Let's to quickly, as you kind of hear them, because I didn't give you a chance to react, and I know you're actively looking for it. Just quickly, I can... Do I have to add my body before I roll or after? Add your what? Ah. My you get body. to use it whenever you want after yeah. 10 minutes. Perfect. Well, I'm going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a bit better. Um, 9 plus 5 is 14. Plus 5 is 19. 19. Solid. You immediately just quick and stiff as a board move right behind team uh those of you who uh, actually all your passive perceptions uh summer you know what's going on but team zania suddenly salt is gone uh but uh, you're, you're probably happy about it in this moment uh, as uh summer says your offerings uh, and kind of points uh at the two of you with uh, both <coughs> open hands uh sorry now continue summer uh I I was wondering if you would grace us with your company this evening. He, uh, he kind of, uh, holds the spear, uh, and just downward, uh, you know, so that it doesn't hit the stairs as he's going down, but he does come walking down the stairs. Uh, and so as you're now able to get a better look at, uh, Keenak, uh, up close, Kinak himself wears essentially uh, shorts uh, that are ripped and torn. They probably were once long merchant clothes, uh, but he doesn't wear armor at all. Uh, he himself, much like uh, a, a Mr. T, uh, would be a good descriptor. He has gold <clears throat> chains that cover his body. You can tell of many, many different religious symbols, uh, beads uh, of jade, ruby, sapphire going across uh, his uh specific symbols here uh he has has to be maybe 10 or 12 large necklaces all in that kind of egyptian style where it's not just like a gold chain it's thick uh flat pieces of gold uh, and as he walks you can hear it kind of sh 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 it sounds like chainmail armor uh as he's walking down and getting closer he's got that uh white rising sun painted uh, across his chest he's eerily uh absent of scars and as a, a red lizard folk with a like tealish green uh, plume that goes down his head all the way down to the back of his tail. You can hear his tail t -t 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 hit the uh, ground as he goes down uh, the stairs. He is tall for a lizard folk, and lizard folk are already tall. Team Zania matches your height, if not a little bit taller, uh, just in stature, maybe just the way he carries himself. Uh, if he, you know, weren't as. I guess jacked. <laughs> he wouldn't uh, probably look uh, as big as he does, but uh, lizard folk are generally very muscular. He is solid muscle uh, as he comes down. As he uh, walks down, he gets towards uh, the end of the steps uh, and looks the three of you over. What is my gift that you bring me? Uh, as the dwarf reaches up one more time, as he sticks it one more time into the dwarf, pulls it back out. Sorry, is the spear the spear that, that um, Tiamat's looking for? It is. Tiam, okay. you see this spear Tiam. with the rising sun. Solid gold, this spear, going all the way up. The spear in itself is about his height, maybe about six and a half feet. Uh, we, bring, we bring you entertainment, and and hopefully uh, we will... We'll, be able to keep you satisfied this evening. Anybody trying to help out in any way? A champion such... <laughs> a champion such as yourself. Do you pull the hair down again? <laughs> I, I, just, I stare over at this halfling like... What? <laughs> there are many ways to entertain someone. Again, there are many spells what? that prevent us from doing that. <laughs> He looks over at Zania and team. He stops and looks at you, Zania. You have weapons. You fight. For fun. She's like... <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Very valley girl. I fight for fun. Uh, <laughs> I'm like okay at it. I'm like, I guess you can say I'm okay. I don't know. I don't know if you've seen me. Uh, I I post on the gram a lot. Uh, as uh, I'm kind of a big girl. So, like, so do you do you actively uh, in, try and kind of in a ditzy way like for fun? Yes. Okay. Yes. Jeez. Also, do I now that I have a closer look at this spear? Does it awaken anything in my brain to memories or anything? You or can roll a religion check, and team, you can roll a history check. Okay. Oh yeah, I've been ready for this my whole life. <laughs> that could have. Nah, solidly. Hey, no, that was actually a fifteen. Ah, I bit my tongue. It's a, it's a fifteen. <laughs> was it a fifteen? It's a fifteen plus. A persistent plus three. Ooh, I don't know. Eighteen. <laughs> really good. What'd you get, Zania? I did roll an eighteen, and I have a negative one. So it's a seventeen. Oh, that's right. I forgot <laughs> the, re the yeah. religious cleric. <laughs> Look, you're more of a practical religion person. You literally have met your god. Nature. You'll see. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, so, both of you. It's. It's. It feels like the name of a song that you just can't quite get off of your tongue. It, you, you know this. You feel like you know what this is. It, you know, you, you've seen it written somewhere, or you've heard of it in passing. Man, maybe you could get him to talk about it, um, but you just don't quite know. Um, he turns uh, and looks to you, t team. Then he says, "You, you have weapons. You fight." Please. Good. Only for fun. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Only for fun. Good. Come. Uh, as, uh, if you fight, you come. Uh, as he starts walking uh, up the stairs, sounding like he's expecting you to follow. At so that, I'm definitely going to give a side um, eye to Zinnia and give kind of like if if blank eyes could give a glare down to summer <laughs> just like what have you done <laughs> that um, seems like i want to take my hat off and toss it aside to okay. um salt as well so that he has it okay yeah. great you kind and of now I'm done. stealthily <laughs> hand it over to salt so salt you currently have the hat with penguin mccool he does a quick little <laughs> just grab some <laughs> right on the top uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that seems like a good place to call it for the night. Next week, we'll All start right. right back up with the walk up Keenax Palace. Amazing. This was yeah, this so was freaking a fun. fantastic session one. Oh, I loved it. I'm so glad that y'all got and to come in. Chat? Chat has chat been is amazing. redonkulously fun during this. I literally have <laughs> names written down from some chat people that I'm absolutely <laughs> going to be uh, putting forth into the campaign thank you strong hearth ribro nature taylor <laughs> i am i am so sorry for accidentally pimping out our party and then going with it not so accidentally <laughs> yeah it's i mean great storyline you know what zinnia will do what it takes she's down with it you know team player <laughs> Team player. Yeah, team team is not being a team. team is not a team player. <laughs> team is like what? Team's like, I am not doing this. I have done so many things in my undead life. I have what? Uh, but what if we <laughs> make us this. fight each other or fight him? Then it's just it's no good. Let's just say we'll that someone can be very charming. Next, Next time on Next Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Perfect. Um so we've got we i'm gonna wrap up the giveaway now so if you haven't already entered enter now you have like one minute before it closes go, 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 go. give it the last minute to enter for the chance to win the mana pro yeah. dice that i shared Woo! and two dice hey, bags from sorry Ray i picked you out <laughs> so make sure oh, that you oh, here they come that. here they come and while oh, they're oh, entering, yeah. I do want to say a quick thank you both to Cast uh, because uh, this has been wonderful, and thank you so much for uh, joining me uh, in this. Y'all are fun people, and I can tell that this is going to be a great stream going forward. And thank you so much to the stream for being so active uh, and involved in this and having such a good turnout for day one of the stream. I'm beyond Heck blown. Yeah. Yeah. 
it has so many mean, people too. Jesus. Right. I mean, not even gonna lie. I think this is uh, triple the amount of people we had uh, that came to critical conversions. Well, hi, dang. How many do we have? Yeah. Now? I was uh, we at one point in time, it went up to like uh, three fifty-two, I think. Really? That was right before. Uh, that was right before break. Holy! Oh. I was like, that was right before break pooped you out. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to. No. <laughs> I We're said about to no. Three hundred entries in the in the comp, if that helps. Ooh, that means there's a few people Perfect. who haven't entered. Do it right now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Do it. Get on it. You gotta win those beautiful Excuse dice. <laughs> Those probably six out of the five of us. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's just us. <laughs> I right. think I have an intro. Uh, I want these down. dice. Five, four, three, four, two, two, one. Happy New Year. Year. Entry is closed. No longer enter the raffle. Who's uh, going on? Um, and the winner is... Oh, wait. I, I, I have the perfect game. Right? Right? Acrogato. <laughs> is, is it Acrogato? Okay, that'd be great. <laughs> I don't know yet. Yeah. That's a big yeah. cool. yeah. Um, when you're ready to chuck it up, I can pick the winner. Oh, yeah, chuck it Good up. Good luck, everyone. Wow, yeah. Chuck up All right, here we go. Thanks for joining us. You get stuff. Because I know a lot of people are going to leave. Right. Thank you so much for watching. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. And we'll see you next Four Tuesday. Time. Same time, same, same bat time, channel. Same time, 7 to 11 p.m. Eastern same Standard everything. Time. And if you win, same stick pimp. around. Drew's familiar. Well, I'm super right on you anyway. Ooh. Alexico, Alexico won. won. Congratulations, Alexico, what a Alexico great name. won. At first, I was like, "That's not you, is it, Alex?" Alex <laughs> won. Congratulations. No, I have the, the, the name that doesn't even <laughs> meet me at all. I mean, I'd take your dice any day, right? Well, this will not be <laughs> the are... last giveaway. We already have more dice planned to give away for next week. Uh, and as I keep making more in videos, uh, I'm kind of running out of room, so I'm thinking I'm going to have to just keep giving more away. Oh, what a shame. Oh, darn. I mean, yeah. Dang, did we make some more dice to give away? So, yeah. <laughs> this, this, so, next week, guys, Lawforge, Mondays, 3 to 5 p.m., yeah. where Ribonator makes this world. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm think thinking guys next week we build about to come up, with. up a map in which they may be fighting on next week. So, if you want to come join and help Ooh. me create the map, I think that would be wonderful. So we're not allowed to come then, huh? <laughs> Ooh. You know, uh, I'll be sleeping. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The Australians we don't have to worry about. We what? We don't have to worry about the Australians. They'll be asleep. <laughs> we don't have to worry about the record. I'm sorry. Which channel just to come watch? It's going to be great. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> awesome. I'm sleep with that. Well, I think that was great. Thank you, everybody, so much for coming and joining. Thank you, players. Y'all were a blast, and I can't wait to play again next week. 7 to 11, same time. More giveaways, more D&D awesomeness. I hope that each and every single one of you have a fantastic night. Good night. See you, guys. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.